this clean girl thing is the dumbest thing i've ever seen because it's just minimal makeup and you guys like to label things you know the whole mob wife thing shut up just shut the hell up i'm begging you to find your own sense of style and personality or just delete your tiktoks the answer is yes like for sure the answer is yes. I, I think i voted yes but i now you change your mind I feel a little bit of a type of way because... Like, All right, let's explain, babe. Yeah, Here we go. The Bitch, what I was trying to say is this situation got me so wet and so, so dry. dry at the same time. Exactly. What's up, bitches? Welcome back to another episode of So Wet, So Dry. I am one of your hosts, Autumn, like this season. I wish I wasn't, but I'm very much in my I do give a fuck era right now, and I work in entertainment. And I'm your other host, Fiji, like the island, like the water. My outfits are not complete without a pair of platform boots, and I work in social media and marketing. If you guys are new here to So Wet, So Dry, what we do is we explore duality through deep diving topics about sex, relationships, personal identity, all where internet trends and reality collide. We post polls for every single episode that we put out, so make sure you guys are following us on Instagram at so wet, so dry. The O's are zeros. You can submit a story and all of that, so make sure you are following us. And also, whatever you're doing right now, wherever you guys are listening, please stop and subscribe follow leave a comment any way you guys can interact with our content i promise it does not go unnoticed and today we are talking about gen z's obsession with aesthetic based trends is this wet is it dry is gen z losing their minds and their identity we don't really know but we're gonna talk about it but before we get into all that we're gonna start the episode as we always do talking about what we're so wet and so dry about in this very moment so I will go first. So as you know, I went out last night and <laughs> I just came across a character, okay, oh of a human being. And like, I, you know how like I feel like when we were in Boston and everything, like people would just come up and talk to us and just like share story, like whatever. So it's just been a while since that's happened because I haven't been like out as much. Right. But we were out and there was this one guy that looks like, shit you not, like, Timothy Chalamet, and my friend said he looked like um, this dude from The Challengers, which I haven't seen the movie, but he's dressed, imagine Timothy Chalamet with earrings, okay, dressed in, like, workout clothes, and, like, uh -huh. kind of, like, like, the, like, <laughs> sneakers you do, like, log jump in, I don't know how to describe it, but, like, okay. very cute, okay, right, so okay. somehow me and Sean start talking to him, but he's missing a tooth, so Timothy Chalamet without one tooth, with earrings, very Shout. pretty, green yeah. eyes, okay? But country as fuck, like, like from, like, country bumfuck, like, Georgia. And, like, I always forget that I live in the South because I'm in Atlanta and I'm, like, around, like, city people all the time. So, like, I forget. Like, I literally, like, couldn't understand what he was really saying sometimes. Like, Sean had to translate because it's <laughs> such a different, like, accent. Yeah. But he was so adorable because he was just so in awe of how everybody was dressed. And he was, like, he was, like, yeah, I make $70,000 as a quick trip manager. I'm, like, okay, that's, like, a good job. Like, he was so sweet. And he was just, like, you're so beautiful. Like, he was just, like, like her outfit is so cool like the other like he was just so like in awe and so excited to be like in the city oh my god and, the thing and he's is, our age yeah i think he's like a couple years older but like from country rural bumfuck so like he you know his style wasn't really like there and no tooth <laughs> no tooth yeah he said he it was so funny it's like what happened he was like oh i fell down the stairs or something but he was like i don't care i have confidence like i rock it and i was like you know what you do like but he, where is the missing tooth like front tooth right here oh yeah. yeah, he's such a fucking sweetheart. I'm screaming. But he was listened he to tall? one of our episodes, so shout He out. did? Yeah, he did. But I kept thinking of this episode, honestly, because I'm like, he is so far off of the spectrum of, like, a TikTok aesthetic. Like, there's no aesthetic going on whatsoever. You know what I'm right. saying? But, like, if he threw on, like, an e-boy fit, he would be, like, TikTok model vibes. So, like, part of me wants to, like, Ooh. style him. And, Put like, him what on. I, right? But I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I feel like it was just fun to meet someone, like, just so odd and different, like, out in the city. Yeah. But, yeah, shout out That's to him. Dope. 
Shout out to him. Yeah, thank you for listening. Um, I would say I'm so wet because I got like a real massage for the first time like a week and a half ago. Oh, yes. And it was just like literally so nice. Like I was nervous going into it because I'm someone that like just gets dizzy easily or whatever. But I just like chugged some electrolytes and like I literally like not one part of it was bad. Not one moment was I like, ow, that hurts. Like it was 10 out of 10. Like absolutely incredible. It's the Raven Spa in Santa Monica, bitches, if you're in the West Coast. But it was just so good, and I needed it so bad. You needed it, it, it was bad. so healing because they really like remove like toxins out of you with the way they like push through your skin. And I've talked about it a little bit, but like I would love to be a massage therapist. So I was obviously like, "Are you guys hiring like front desk people?" Like, whatever. So yeah, it was like inspiring because of that, but also just like so good. And they give you tea and like apple slices. Like the apples were so good, bro. Like it was magical oh. as fuck. Like. And it wasn't even, it wasn't super high end, like expensive, but it was yeah. just like perfect. Like the yeah. people, everyone just super wet about it. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Can they sponsor us? I want to go. Like I'm we need obsessed. to go to a spot together. Bitch. Like, I am obsessed. Um, For so dry. Okay. So guys, like if you can't tell, I'm out of my situationship again. I'm back on the dating app, so I'm really yeah. dry about that. Because I really, I feel like when you go through a breakup, like, your first thing you want to do is, like, download the apps and get that Always. instant, like, validation. Like, I'm just like, tell me I'm pretty. Tell me I'm hot. Like, da-da-da. And like, coming. Right. We just did an episode, like, the Bumble one about dating apps. So I'm thinking about how they're fucked up. I'm like, I don't really want to be on here. But I honestly have come <laughs> to the conclusion that they have the opposite effect of like actually providing validation because it's so exhausting and fatiguing to have the same conversation with people over and over again. And I don't even think they're that cute. They're going to make the conversation sexual or they want to meet up like instantly. And so I'm considering deleting them. I haven't yet, but I'm like, I went out, what, last weekend, this week, yesterday. Like I've met people out. Like there's people that I meet when I take myself outside. So I don't need them. And, like, it's probably shallow of me to even want that validation. Like, I'm like, I should be grown enough, you know? We should. We should absolutely be grown enough. But I think, like, yeah, exactly. It's like we think it's going to give us one thing, like, validation and to feel good. But it really doesn't. And it's just, like, so annoying. And, like, it just feels like, like, I feel like if you go out, you put yourself out there, you go up to guys or girls or whomever, like, that's, like, putting yourself out there, like, to date. But it's, like, to do it on the apps, it just feels like so much energy to, like, swipe and talk and constantly check it. It's just, like, too much. And like, I, I hate, feel like, like, the part of it that, like, I, I think because I love the, like, meeting someone, building sexual tension, like, do we like each other, do we not, the flirting. On dating apps, the guys just think that you're, like, instantly, like, too into them. So it completely kills any sort of, like, actual fun. Because you swiped on them. Yes. Like, cool. like, like ugh, over yeah, it. Yeah, anyway. so whack. Anyway, I am so dry just because this guy from, like, I went to high school with, like, he was, like, like, we were friends in high school. Like, he was nice to me, but there definitely was some times that, like, he told me I was, like, fat or, like, whatever and was, like, kind of a dick. But then, obviously, I, like, I mean, and I was never fat, you guys. It's just, like, my school had such, like, skinny girls. All my friends were so skinny. That so is I did so kind of, fuck. Like, that actually happened to me in high school. What is with young boys, like, commenting on girls' bodies? Like, ew. Bye. It's so crazy. Like, the way he said it, too, is, like, so weird. But anyways, so whatever. Scarred me for life. But now he's trying to hit it so fucking hard. This man is DMing me on both of my Instagram accounts, texting me, like, Yo, what's up? And it's just, like, so wild. I'm like, you were, like, so nasty to me in high school. And now you see, like, I'm doing well. Like, I I fucking glue up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're trying to fuck? Like, yeah, right. Like, first of all, he's not even cute. But, like, he was, like, popular, quote, unquote, in school. So, like, I was, like, damn. Like, the kid everyone loves is, like, fucking thinks I'm fat. Like, you know? But now it's just like, yeah, bro. Like, but he's just irritating. That's me. kind like, of what. And he has though, a girlfriend it's like, too. Now you can't get me, bitch. Like, look at the table. Exactly. And I'm like, bro. Honestly, you're fat now. Like, <laughs> oh god. Like, I'm not even trying to be fatphobic, but like, 
For real, though. Right. I'm like, we're going to call. You're going to say I am. I'm like, you are as well, sir. Thank you. Anyways, so let's get into the episode, guys. As Fiji said, today we're talking about TikTok aesthetic trends and why people are so obsessed with it and what are the good things about it. There definitely are some good things, but we definitely will be diving into the not so good things um, because it's just kind of crazy And people are definitely speaking out about how it is detrimental, like online and stuff. So we're going to get into all of that. Mm -hmm. So first, what are these TikTok aesthetics you speak of? Um, This article says TikTok aesthetics, Gen Z's catch all term for unique subcultures are reinventing self-expression. Whether creators are capturing their favorite aesthetic themed outfits, makeup looks, or room decorations, these videos constantly push the boundaries of modern style by broadcasting their unique flair to millions of adoring followers. Rather than restricting themselves to normal forms of inspiration, TikTokers look anywhere from childhood nostalgia to classic literature to add a taste of whimsy to their worldview. So this is obviously a very positive paragraph on Mm -hmm. what these aesthetics are. And I do think there are some positive things to them, but to say that, like, I don't know, like, constantly push the boundaries of modern style, like, that's kind of going above and beyond to me. Like, this is modern style. It is modern style. I feel like it's so mainstream now. And I think it starts smaller, but it's like TikTok aesthetic things are literally in, like, like mainstream news stations. Like, they talk about these things, so it really has, like, reached a point like beyond just TikTok. Um, Obviously, if you're not on TikTok or like not online, you're not going to know, which I feel like your friend, like you said, he probably doesn't know what a coquette look is. No clue. Um, But basically, we did a lot of research on all the different types of trends. So I do want to just like read off like a brief list of the kinds of things we're talking about. um, And then we'll go from there. So we got the clean girl, the sad girl, the downtown girl, the rich girl, the soft girl, Y2K, e-girl, mob wife, dark academia, cottage core, coquette, Nike girl, and then we got some like strawberry makeup. There's like tomato makeup, glazed donut, latte makeup, blueberry milk. Like you guys, it's literally insane. No makeup makeup, hot Cheeto girl, coastal grandmother, Barbie core, maximalism, baddie vanilla girl and then Fiji mentioned one that's like quiet money or whatever yeah so as you can see there's so many and this is definitely not even close to like a full list of these but it's just insane of how many there really are so we went to our audience and asked you guys have you ever identified with one with one of these TikTok trendy aesthetics and 42 percent of y'all said yes and 58 percent of y'all said no which I thought was interesting, but I do feel like our audience maybe does kind of like to like do their own thing. Like I feel like a lot of people that follow us are super unique and like also creators and stuff, but it's hard not to get wrapped up in it. Like it's yeah. everywhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, do you think you've ever like identified with one completely? I don't think I've ever identified with one completely. Like I do love the like coquette type of look with like the pink and the bows, but I never, like, would take on a whole identity like that. Like, I feel like our whole thing is, like, we don't have just one. Yeah. And, like, so, like, you know, because it is, like, the clean girl, it's, like, not just a look, but it's also, like, a lifestyle and, like, the things you do. And, like, I could never minimize myself to that. Yeah, because I think that's the interesting thing. Like, some of these, like the clean girl aesthetic is very much like an aesthetic, but also a lifestyle. And same with like hot Cheeto girl, I feel like is much more lifestyle based than like style based versus mob wife is more like style based. So like, it's weird because some of them are just like how you dress. And some of them are also like your routine, like your habits, like that type of stuff. There's a scale. There's a scale. And I think some of them do give off, like, kind of a certain vibe, like, especially with, like, sad girl. Mm -hmm. And, like, we've talked about the mysterious girl, obviously. and lover girl. Yeah, so it's, like, some of them kind of do give off, like, some sort of vibe, but it is very just kind of, like, superficial, you know? Like, overall. Yeah. 
Um, but we obviously there's so many, but we wanted to ask you guys like what was kind of your favorite. So we gave you guys four to choose from. Um, and so we asked you, which of the following is your favorite trendy aesthetic? And 38% said sad girl. 31% said mob wife. 23% said coquette. And 8% said clean girl. Which sad girl won? Like, does that surprise you? Like, I don't know. I, yes and no. I feel like a good amount of, like, my followers at least, like, are, like, more alternative like based. And I feel like that's probably the one I would have identified the most with where I let the style become part of my identity, like, especially in college. Low key, bro. Like, I think it was also the music that I was listening to because I was very into China, not, like, Black China, China Rogers, which, like, rest in peace, but she's, like, an emo rapper. Like, I was very into, like, that type of music. And I wore, like, you know, a lot of, like, goth, like, eyeliner, but, like, I think I mixed it up in other ways, but I do think, one, I was very sad and emo at the time, so it just helped to, like, but, like, I wanted to wear all black, like, now that I'm honestly, like, a little, like, a lot happier, I don't identify with sad girl as much, like, I put on more, like, light colored styles and different styles, because, like, one, I feel more comfortable, like, mixing it up in my identity, but two, like, I don't associate my identity as much with just being sad and emo, you know? Yeah, because I feel like you were, like, you were a good combination of, like, sad and mysterious because I don't think you really came across as sad. Like, you came across as, like, super, like, strong, just, like, a presence, like, you know, but I I totally get it. And I think, like, because you kind of liked Mob Wife, too. Like, you put me Mm -hmm. on to that one. But I also just, like, clean girl aesthetic gives very much, like, white girl Starbucks vibes. Yeah. And, like, personally, like, no. I mean, I do enjoy the casual Starbucks Well, and the thing about, but... like, some of them, it, I mean, even Mob Wife, too, like, a lot of them have been, like, criticized for, like, cultural appropriation and stuff, too. Because, and like, Hot Cheeto Girl is low-key racist as fuck. Yeah, but, yeah, and, like, the slick back, like, hair look, like, that was, like, yeah. mostly, like, black women or Latina women that were doing that. And then even, like, the lip liner, like, the dark lip liner, which I've done before with, like, no, like, clear or, like, really new yeah. lips. Yep, like, yep, that yep, was yep. really popular. So, like, some of these, like, looks have taken pieces from, like, different cultures or different like communities and kind of reappropriated yeah. them or really like whitewashed them. Yeah. So it's like we're going to get into bit, that a little yeah. bit too. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, and also one of our listeners did submit a story that said, I'm a fan of Y2K, but I was before TikTok. I've been on it since Tumblr. And that was like in my like research and some articles we pulled, like it was a lot of that. It's like, this used to be like kind of like a Tumblr thing. Like yes. to have this sort of like, style mood board type vibes but tiktok is just like a crazy fucking platform and like we're not gonna get into it in this episode but like overall like tiktok is like making people like so fucking insecure like while i was looking for this episode it's like what's also trending is like having um legging legs like if your legs look good and legging i can't And it's, like, girls being, like, when I see a girl with legging legs, like, rolling their eyes, I'm, like, are we, like, 12? Like, what the fuck? Like, even, like, the symmetrical face, like, like, stuff, like, that was, like, Yeah, it's just a lot. But I I do feel like the aesthetic stuff, like, probably did start, probably did start more with Tumblr, because now that I think about it, like, I feel like my style back then was much more grunge, which is, like, 90s. So it makes sense that, like, Y2K in early 2000s is popular now because it's, I read something one time that it's usually, like, whatever. Like, 20 years Yeah, exactly. Later. Whatever, yeah, I've like, read that, too. 20 years, because those were the older kids when you were growing up, so that's, like, what you look up to. Isn't that so funny? It like, is. Like, and we're more, like, we're kind of in the middle because, like, I always loved, like, 90s grunge, like, Nirvana, like, all that type of stuff. But then also I loved, like, Mary-Kate and Ashley, like, Lizzie McGuire, like, those types like of stuff. Like, 2000s, styles. yeah. Yeah, and people even get mad about Y2, because Y2K is technically, like, year 2000, but then there's also McBling, which is, like, Paris Hilton and, like, all this. So there's different, like, names for, like, all this stuff. But and there's even like 2010s too, which feels yeah. like yeah. And I actually it honestly 
Yeah, it's weird. I, I did like a whole deep dive on the Jersey Shore style, which is like coming back too, because that's like 2010s, 20, 2008, whatever. But the big furry boots are really popular right now. And that's kind of like. Oh my God, you're so yeah. right. I forgot that that was like Jersey Shore. It was thing. all they Jersey would Shore. wear those. And the when I watched the video, maybe I'll try to plug it, but like they were talking about how the Jersey style, Jersey Shore style came from like honestly like mob wife because it's like Italian style. And also right. they pulled things and appropriated things from like black culture where they had like a lot more chains and like the like yeah. even the like wife beaters and like stuff like that. So yeah. it's it like all style influences each other and that makes sense, but labeling it. And, like, taking it on as your personality is, like, I don't know, a little weird. And then it, like, going viral because a white girl does it is right. just, like, crazy, you yeah. know? And that's, like, I know. Um, but let's break some of these down. We'll start with Sad Girl. We found this article that talked a little bit about, like, what the Sad Girl is exactly. Um, similarly targeted towards teen girls and young women, Sad Girl aesthetic is characterized by sadness, isolation, and you guessed it, a heroin chic beauty standard from the photos to the captions. Its followers believe there's empowerment in women expressing their darkest feelings, which can be true in a society that still stigmatizes mental health and women's emotions. However, there is a major issue in the performance of those emotions versus the actual experience of mental health issues amongst teens. A 2015 Hello Giggles article noted that sad girls have blurred the lines between those who latch onto the dark aesthetic photos popping up and those who are struggling with mental illness and a deeper, more pervasive kind of sadness. It's not the entities within the culture that are particularly unhealthy. It's the use of these interests to create an aesthetic fad that, that utilizes the hallmarks of teen depression or depression in general while simultaneously, intentionally or not, parodying and alienating teens and young adults who are struggling with mental illness and find solace in identifying or creating the art that sad girls use purely for its cool catch. Cash, yeah. Cool cash. <clears throat> Wrote Hannah Mae. Even more disturbing that teens using depression to be cool is the possibility of companies marketing depression to those teens to make a quick buck. So I get how oh, this is kind of like, okay, like why you got to take it that far though. But it's like honestly so true. And I feel like it's like, because I've identified with the sad girl aesthetic and low-key the sad girl that like didn't want to eat aesthetic. Yeah. Because that was like a whole vibe on Tumblr in like 2000s too. And like the heroin chic and like a sad girl with like a cigarette and it's like dark and like her makeup is like, looks perfect but like the she's crying it's a, a little, little bit up, like yeah. and you look on tiktok and it's a lot of like um that girl maddie from euphoria who was like going through an abusive relationship and crying and it's just like it really is like glorifying this whole thing and i think it's good like obviously on the one hand it's like empowering it's okay to show your emotions but i don't think that's really like how an aesthetic can, like, it's not that powerful. It's a look. Like, how can that really empower people? I don't know. I, like, it's weird because I do feel like, like, when I was, like, sad girl aesthetic vibes, like, I my body was very heroin chic at the time. And I, I do think I took on, one, because I was already struggling with depression, but, like, I was doing a, a good amount of drugs. Like, I was, like, very sad, sleepy. Like, it, like, made... And I felt like because I felt like that, I always liked, like, the more emo, dark, side girl styles. But, like, they went hand in hand. So, like, it yep. is, like, a little weird to me, I think, when people, like, appropriate it or, like, they're... Because, I don't know, part of me is, like, you don't have to be sad to dress like a sad girl, emo, whatever. But at the same time, yep. when I was very sad, that's, like, very much what I was associating with. But I also think it's just, like... Maybe when you're young, you get confused and you don't know that you can do like both. But like, yeah, I think that also started on Tumblr a lot, too, because all those like sad poems and the aesthetic cutting yourself and like that type Dude, of stuff. The aesthetic cutting yourself was crazy. insane. And like bulimia, like, anorexia, like posted it was like everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then you had like lesbian porn and that was great. But like, I feel like online, it's like you see someone else like crying real tears. Like you can tell it's not performative. It's like that does make people like feel like community sometimes. But it's like 
social media in general is just like so filtered and like you don't know what people are editing and whatever they're doing. So it's just hard to like genuinely believe that like sad girl aesthetic was created to like empower women. Like I really just think it was like a look and maybe it does empower women in a sense where they relate to other people that like are kind of in that era. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. But I just would never like advertise it as something like so empowering. Well, and I think it also comes into the whole like appropriating things because like say there's this really cool girl who's posting all this sad shit and has this style or whatever and then other girls want to do it and then emulate it. That's where it gets scary because they like rapid fire. Yeah, exactly. They want to be heroin chic too. Like that's not good. That's really bad. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the mob wife a little bit. And essentially, like, how the mob wife happened, it was right after Clean Girl. Mm. And one bitch got on TikTok and was like, Clean Girl's out, mob wife is in. Like, everyone go fucking change your whole lives immediately. So I'm just like, this is, like, insane to me, honestly. But so here's a TikTok just showing kind of, like, one example of, like, the mob wife style. Oh, you want mob wife aesthetic? Okay. I can give you mob wife aesthetic. And then, so this article said, TikTok's algorithm is designed to bring these declarative, catchy aesthetics to the top of our feed, and these trends are often criticized for their shallowness and disconnect from anything anyone is actually doing or feeling in real life. The mob wife aesthetic is just the latest to surface, but it does stand out against trends of late for its real life roots and culture and its mature brazen attitude, which feels like a shift. And then it talks about like The Sopranos, which is like this HBO series. And basically one of those um, actors, I believe, said that the mob wife, by comparison, is a little more grown up. And she was comparing it to, like, clean girl vibes. Mm-hmm. It's right there in the name. She's a wife. She's not a girl. She's a woman. She's confident in her sexuality. She put ZD on the table. And she's well aware of how the world works and how to <laughs> bend it to her advantage. Trivieri put it best when she said, Carmela Soprano walked so you bitches could run. So I'm just like, bro, what do you think? I I'm like, I kind of love, have you ever seen The Sopranos? No. It's an old show. Like, it's about. Right, it's yeah. been around forever. Yeah, it's honestly like an iconic show. Like, I need to go back and watch the whole thing again. But I, I love the Mob Wife aesthetic. And I kind of like see how it got popular after Clean Girl. Because I feel like Mob Wives, like, one, like they said, like, they're more like women. Like, they're more like they talk back more like they have their shit together they're low-key manipulating the men behind the scenes but like you know they they play like a secondary role but they also have it all together I don't know but like I, I also love this aesthetic just because like I always got a lot of clothes from my like Nana's closet and she's not Italian but her like ex-husband was Italian and she grew up like she was like wearing clothes in that era so like a lot of like fur coats like big sunglasses she always had long nails like and I'm from like Connecticut like the the northeast like a lot of Italians like where I'm from and stuff so like I feel like that type of Long Island like mob wife like Italian like northern woman I just have always really loved that style and that like aesthetic and that attitude and that influenced a lot of like Jersey Shore style and like whatever so I think it's less about you know, calling it mob wife is just, oh, we have this fun, like this label for it. But I've always loved like those aesthetics, you know? Yep. So I don't know. Yeah. That's just kind of how I feel about it. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, you put me onto this shit like because like of TikTok and everything. And I do think it's like a good look. I just think like overall, like I think also I've just been like deep diving this shit. And it's just kind of like scary, like yeah. how fast this shit takes off and like switches. Yeah. So to me, it's just all kind of like the same. But I feel like when it comes to like clean girl versus like this, like I would way rather wear like a fur coat. Like I think it's like hotter, you know? Yeah. And I think the thing about the algorithms is important too, because it said like the algorithms are designed to bring these catchy like phrases because you know how your algorithm like adapts to what you watch or whatever. I feel like it's made more of the like reason for us to label these aesthetics 
than it right. ever did before. You know what I'm saying? Like before yeah. that would just yeah. be like thrifted style or something like that. <laughs> right. You know? I know. Um, and then this last one we'll kind of like describe is the clean girl. Um, basically, this article said, if by some chance the clean girl aesthetic has yet to grace your grid, think of someone you know who has their life completely together. Now imagine them as an outfit. Maximal in regards to their career goals. That girl, the clean girl, is a minimalist when it comes to beauty and fashion. Generally, she's early to rise and early to bed. She journals and meditates every morning and also performs her skincare routine religiously. She's the dictionary definition of cool, calm, and collected, and her closet consists of pieces that are simultaneously comfortable and sophisticated. While many of today's fashion it girls are proponents of the trending aesthetic, they aren't the first. Black women and Latinas have been doing it for ages. Mm -hmm. And the late Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, who perhaps the look's original poster girl back in the 90s, just like we're saying, it's all like this nostalgic shit. Bissett Kennedy mastered clean yet sophisticated styling through staple pieces in a neutral color palette, says Victoria Barbara, a luxury fashion and beauty influencer. Her looks are relevant today because they are timeless. Think polished hair and a slicked back bun, chunky gold jewelry, and very natural skin makeup with a dewy finish. And I feel like it would be better to look up to like a specific person and be like, I love her look and like her vibe. But it's like the way the clean girl like, like, I don't know, because Mob Wife has it too. It has that kind of like edge and vibe to it. But this one, just about, like, going to bed early, like, it's giving, like, she's wholesome. Like, she's almost Christian. Like, she doesn't, like, mess up or make mistakes. And I'm just, like, people, like, really live by this shit. Like, we talk about it like it's a trend. But, like, people for real, like, and we'll get into it. It's, like, that's how they identify and, like, that's it. They're just a clean girl. They live by all of that. And it's just, like, oh, my God. Yeah, I feel like this one comes off of, like, girl boss, like, in a way, but it's, like, the girl boss that wants to be a wife and not necessarily, like, corporate core, but she wants to go running and have her, like, kale smoothie and, like, whatever, but I did, I did kind of, like, because the that girl trend is a little different than clean girl, but they're so connected, and this one was really, really big on YouTube. I remember, like, I want to say it was, like, 2021, I was watching like a lot of vloggers at the time and they were vloggers that I liked because I liked to watch their routine because it motivated me to like, you know, work out, eat a healthy breakfast, like those types of things. But they definitely push like the that girl and the clean girl as like a lifestyle. And so it's weird because it's like when I watch those type of YouTubers, I never really liked that type of style. Like I'll wear like athletic wear during the week, but you know, I'm not really looking clean. Like I'm like, my camera's not on during my meetings, like whatever. But like I, parts of it I did like because I did find it like motivational content to be like, oh, you know, it's nice to wake up. Like waking up at 5 a.m. was such a fucking trend across YouTubers and like reading at night and all of these things. But like, it's ridiculous the level that they take it in order to look like they have their life together. And again, we're like consuming content. So like, did they really wake up at 5 a.m. or did they set up their camera at 8 p.m. and record their like 5 a.m. wake up? We don't fucking know. We don't fucking know and we're never gonna know. I used to watch this girl on TikTok because it was just like so like, like, like what's the word? Like I just couldn't not watch. And she was like, like watch me do my like 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. routine, like girl boss era. And it's just like, Holy shit. And then she like realized that like she wasn't getting enough sleep and like yeah. actually developed like a health problem because yes, she was I doing watched, that. I watched one of my favorite YouTubers go through that too. Like it was like you kind of like watched her in real time take, taking on too much, waking up at 5 a.m., doing like – and like workouts. she started so she, breaking out. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then she like moved and she had to like redo her life. Like you kind of watch that, but it's like, that's normal. That's human. Like I know it's like successful people wake up early. Like a routine is good. I have a pretty solid routine that I follow that helps me a lot. But I think like, like you said, like when it's just like becomes this, like your whole personality type of thing and you're pushing it on other people, it's just another bar for women to reach that we're never fucking going to. So dude, exactly. Like if there's not, as if there's not enough, like it's literally exhausting. Yeah. So 
Basically, TikTok micro aesthetics like the coastal grandmother, clean girl, and mop wife have not only captivated Gen Z, but become almost as ubiquitous as the app itself. The popularity of these hyper-specific trends is not only indicative of the generation's ability to shape culture, but also embrace of collectivism. With a whole generation so easily shifting their identities to embrace quickly changing fads, one wonders what happened to individuality and why does Gen Z feel the need to conform? So that's what we're going to get into next is like, is Gen Z having identity problems? Like, why do we feel the need to like follow these trends? And like, you know, it's fine to like a trend and like do the look. But I mean, like really dedicate your life to like this sort of lifestyle. Like, why is that happening to so many people? So we asked you guys in the polls, we said, do you think Gen Z is having an extra hard time with identity? 58% said yes, 23% said same as other generations, and 19% said no. Um, The answer is yes, like for sure. The answer is yes. I think I voted yes, but I... Now you change your mind. I feel a little bit of a type of way because... All right, let's explain, babe. Here we go. the, The paragraph before, it's like, it's weird because when you think back in like society and how there was like just MTV and there was just like this radio station and just these top artists that people are listening to, like there was a monoculture, like, you know, Hollister, Abercrombie, like just one culture and aesthetic. Like, I feel like we are very privileged in the way that we have like access to all these different trends and styles and ways to express ourselves and we can bounce between them. You know, like there's not just one version of being cool. Like you could be a clean girl and be cool, but you could also be a mob wife and be cool. Like you could also be a sad girl and be cool. So like part of me is like, I don't know if it's identity, an identity crisis as much as like part of that is going to happen when you're changing your style and you're exposed to so much. But I think that's a like, are we overexposed to too much? Yes. And there's a lot of it capitalism. But at the same time, I think it develops more opportunity for people to like grow their identity and like figure out who they are versus just having one monoculture pushed to them. And if they're not yeah. that, then they're fuck else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I want to give my rebuttal, but it's later in the episode a little bit. So I think we're going to. Okay. Win. Okay. But I also, I've never thought about it that way. And I think you and I have never been people, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that is like, well, maybe in high school I was, but like someone like that wanted to have the top trends. Like we wanted, like, cause I'm down for any trends. Like I don't care where it ranks, but I think like certain people do and they want to have the top trends. So since it changes all the time, It's like people feel like stressed out, like they need to adjust to the culture, but they don't need to. Like, why do they feel like they do? I almost feel like maybe I'm sure there's definitely people that feel like that probably. But I feel like because there's so many different aesthetics it's almost the opposite. They shouldn't feel like that. Right. Yeah. Because like I remember in high school, like I always like to be trendy. Like I definitely always like to have style and like put my stuff together, whatever. But there were certain like big trends that were like cool, like Michael Kors bags. Like I remember Michael Kors bags were like a big thing. Like every girl had a purse. And, and like, I coach bag. Yeah. Or long champ. Long champ bag. Yeah. Oh, we didn't have we have Vera Bradley though. Like I definitely had one of those oh, and that I never too. even really liked them. But like yeah, I like those, I, yeah, th- those types of things. And I, and my mom got me one, but it was like yellow. Like I, I really didn't like it. I was like, this isn't the cool one, whatever. But also like Uggs, like bear paws and like the, whatever, Ew, that type paws. of stuff. Like, I feel like it was just much more of like a singular lane. I don't know. I, yeah, I see. Cause both. I also think like for <laughs> us, like being 26, like think about like an 18 year old, like they're not as like like develop to be able to understand like you know like I don't know I feel like there shouldn't be this pressure but like there definitely is yeah like kind of conform but I agree with you and I also think Gen Z is definitely a generation that isn't like conforming to be like everyone else in terms of the generations above like I think they're very proud to like be different and have different views yeah but at the same time it's like yeah and maybe like 
because there was only like Hollister, Abercrombie, like Forever 21, like those types of places. It's like we didn't really realize like that we were all the same. And now like because ev- like I don't know well, what I'm yeah, trying to say. Like, but- I remember in high school, like I feel like I've always had like I liked more of an alternative style. But I remember being in yeah. high school and that wasn't as cool. Like it was like kind right. of post emo like all those bands type of stuff and it was much more like Katy Perry era like floral boho like um, Lana Del Rey like whatever so I remember feeling like I wanted to experiment with my style but I like it wasn't cool because of the people you hang out with but I do I have come across like teenagers and 18 year olds on my feed where it's like one girl is like sad girl emo and the other girl is like clean girl and they're like oh when you you have your clean girl to your sad girl like I feel like because there's like you know that girl goes off of clean girl goes off of girl boss goes off of whatever like it's its own lane versus like sad girl and mob wife might be closer related and like e-girl so it's like Even if you have a different genre of it, like, there's still ways to grow and be cool while, like, existing together and not, like, going into the main one. I don't know. And I think it's fun to, like, try out different looks and vibes. I think it's just about how seriously you take it. Yeah. And if you feel, like, the pressure to have all of the products or the resources for that specific look, like... That's a problem. Yeah. But, like, if it's just fun, like, it should just be fun. You know? Yeah. There's nothing. I mean, there are some things wrong with it. But, you know. Yeah. Um, but we asked you guys, like, why do you think Gen Z feels the need to conform? And 35% of y'all said loneliness, yearning for community. 35% also said social media makes it too easy. 20% said the constant product ads and 10% said they don't feel the need to conform. Um, and I definitely think people are yearning for community. I think we are like, you know, pandemic sort of generation yeah. type bitches. Like we, like, I don't know, like a lot of people like in Gen Z, like missed out on their graduation, whether it was like high school or this and just like community things like that. And like, we really all feel like, we want like two years of our life back because like yeah. we really didn't like do anything. Um, and I think TikTok creates great community. I really do. But I think exactly like 50% of the other stuff is like it creates like bad community. Yeah. So I think it's like both. And I do think social media makes it look very like glamorous to be a certain look when maybe it's like like maybe that girl's just pretty. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, is it style or is she just pretty? Like, is I remember she just that pretty? was like a like, whole. That's or what is she I skinny? Think all the is time. she is is that an outfit or is she just skinny? That was like another one <laughs> that was going around because it's like I, I remember when I was like really skinny and didn't have as many curves. Like, it's like you could put on a fucking like giant t shirt and like look good. And like, it's she. It falls on your body different. Like when you have curves, you have to dress to your curves. Like whatever, but. I, I'm between like social media makes it too easy and the constant product ads because I yeah, do think they one. like latch on like the companies will latch on or their marketing department is so savvy that they name it this aesthetic. They're like, oh, this is the fucking fern aesthetic. I don't know. And we're going to get into marketing a little bit and yeah. how they like full on like this is. And I feel like it's also the age of like not I mean I don't know the exact term you probably do but it's not like direct marketing like you think about bloom like people are like sometimes they're like I take my bloom like the greens no you've never never seen an ad for bloom no we must have different algorithms what is that it's like it's babe it's (laughs) so popular I swear to fucking god it's like greens like people make green juice Whatever, but all of their ads, like, they're just in the shot. It's not necessarily, like, buy this product. So I feel like there's a lot of that going on. Like, now it's, like, a thing on all platforms that you are supposed to disclose if it's a paid promotion. The thing that's tricky, though, and I get – I've been getting so many emails lately on my personal Instagram where it's, like, they want to gift you something in exchange for a post – and that's a little iffy because they're not paying you. They're yeah. gifting you, but with the obligation to post. So it's like this weird, but you're technically supposed to disclose that it's an ad on everything because people like audiences should be aware that they're yeah. being marketed to. But yeah. Yeah. They have that. They have paid partnership, but they just don't say the words bloom. The video is something so random, but the bloom is just like 
sitting on the table in direct vision yeah. and it says paid partnership. Like it's just bizarre. And I feel like a lot of these trends are like get ready with me's where they like have makeup products. So a lot of it is about advertising. Too. Well, and I think, yeah, I was going to say, I feel like because like we're in the age of social media where like before, cause I can geek out on all this stuff, but before advertising was like mad men, like literal, just like billboards and like TV commercials. Like now we have to get so much more creative with like the way that you market because like you're, content's at you like 24 seven and marketing has become like so much more lifestyle based because of these influencers and stuff. So it's almost like for me as a marketing person, it's kind of smart to do that because it's like when you have constant like ads in your face all the time, this is like adding an aura of like mystery to it. Like, Oh, this person's just cool. Therefore this product is cool. And it's just part of their regular routine, you know? So right. No, seriously though. It's like effortless. Yeah. And it works. Like it does work and we're already kind of talking about it, but like talking about sort of now like going into the wet parts about this kind of thing. And I'm really glad you brought up like it is a really amazing thing that like we have so many like options to look to. And it's obviously like some of these looks like you do have to have money to like get it. Yeah, I mean, I would say so. But some of them not necessarily. Well, because of Sheen too, like. I mean, right. it's easy to, like, and put other a websites. bunch of shit in your car and, like, it add up, like, very quickly. But if you want to do a mini haul with $50, you could get a whole new aesthetic for, like, a <laughs> week. Oh, I dude, don't know. <laughs> stop. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> um, but this article kind of touched on the whole, like, you know, Gen Z is yearning for community. So it says, while the trends that Gen Z latch onto are often criticized for their homogeneity, they are a source of connection and community after a significant period of isolation. They symbolize a sense of kinship for Gen Z because when we participate in these trends, even if it's from the comfort of our own bedrooms, we know we aren't alone. And I feel like that is true. Like it does definitely bring community. If you see a bitch like dressed up like a fairy girl, like that's not everyone's vibe. Yeah. But other fairy girls that like that will be like, oh my God, like, you know, representation of the fairies. Like, (laughs) so it is like a good thing for sure. And I just want to like, we can talk about other wet things we have from it. Like, I definitely feel like there's enough trends where like with body types, it is kind of like diverse in that sense. I don't feel like a lot of times you have to like look a certain way. Like it's like either super skinny or like BBL, like whatever. But I do feel like all of these aesthetics, like maybe like, I don't think like, um, like certain ones that I would say like coquette, like I don't feel like I have to be super skinny to wear like those types of things. Like, I don't know. So I feel like that's good. And I feel like there is a variety. The dark academia one was someone something I learned about. And I just feel like I would be so attracted to a girl like that. It's also in like the sad girl like era area. Yeah. But they're just like super smart, tortured, hot, wear black in the library with candles. Like, so I don't know. Like, there's definitely a lot of wet things about it. And I feel like when you do kind of think about the inner workings of everything and think of capitalism and overconsumption, it's like hard to kind of see what's good about it. Like, I feel like everything just feels bad today. Like, especially like you brought up Sheen. It's like people fucking hate Sheen and they should hate Sheen. Like Sheen's not, but it's like, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I feel like I'm a little iffy. Maybe I feel more wet about this overall than you do because I feel like I have, like, a good amount of things that I can find. Like, because it's, like, one, people are coming out of the pandemic where they're wearing pajamas and they're in their house, like, all day, right? But, like, in that era, there were a lot of influencers that came up just from, like, styling the things in their closet and getting ready for, like, no reason kind of thing. And I think, like, post-pandemic, people really wanted to, like, dress up and play around with style like a lot more because they weren't wearing things or they weren't going to school they weren't going to work like nothing and then like also from like the styling aspect of things like I feel like everyone when you like figure out like what styles you like you're gonna pull inspiration from like a tv show that you watch like a mood board like a pinterest thing like a tiktok like whatever and I think that it's almost like Like, I get what you're saying about, like, 18-year-olds and, like, young people, like, too quickly, like, identifying, like, putting their identity into it. But, like, to me, like, 
style and like trends are so much of like an art that it's like, okay, you might think dark academia is this tortured girl, this sad girl, this whatever. You watch this movie, this show makes you think of it. But like the idea is to like channel that in your outfit, but not take it on as an identity. And like tomorrow you could be like coquette or whatever. Like right, it's a creative people aren't act. Doing that. Yeah. A lot of people aren't doing that. Like people are like. But like are they? they? Want- I like I don't Bro, know. Bro, watch the videos in the in the fucking drive, babe. Like yes, like and maybe they're being performative. Like maybe they're acting like they're taking it on too much. But it's like. Like, we'll, we'll get into it. It's, like, people, they're, like, afraid to, like, be both. Like, they want to just be one aesthetic and, like, truly live that lifestyle. And, like, they are kind of racist, yeah. like, in a sense sometimes. But yeah. it is about, like, how you take it. And I do agree with everything that you're saying. And I feel that way, too. Like, I do think it is, like, an art form. And it's really, and it's creative. Like, at the end of the day, it's creative. Like, yeah. it really is. And it's yeah. Tumblr esque. Like I, I do fuck with it too. Like I definitely don't hate it. I'm just kind of like, oh. yeah. Like in some ways, it makes me like a little like sad or like if you're whatever because it's like I think style and like styling and like clothes is is such like a creative art. Like people make their own clothes, they style like whatever. And so to almost be like, oh, like if you just like put on this aesthetic or you're like switching too much or whatever, then like you're too easily influenced or what because I think it should evolve you know but like I feel you about like someone sticking to like Elaine and making that their entire personality I guess it's like those lines of where like your identity starts and ends in your style because like your style is an expression of your identity but it you know yeah and I think like maybe like most of the people that we would like hang out with and like people that are like maybe closer to our age like I I really love the idea of like being coquette and like super princessy than like popping out in right. like black leather dominatrix and like we both do shit like yeah. that like maybe you don't go super princessy but yeah. like you have other I have vibes. like girly like, stuff like more so recently I feel like recently right and it's probably like even because just like of TikTok. colors like yeah. I would say honestly probably I've been influenced by coquette by clean girl by all those things to dress more feminine in ways so that's why I'm like Oh, like, it's a good thing because I'm like, you know. Yeah, but I think it's all about perspective. And I think I was influenced, too, because I watched, like, three specific YouTube videos that were kind of, like, hating on it. Yeah. So I think it is kind of just about, like, you know, like, maybe I would think differently. And that's why it's really hard, like, consuming content because you want to have your own beliefs. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like, especially when it's women, I'm like, damn, she ate that up. Like, she's so right. Like, I'm, like, gullible in that sense. Yeah. But. That's why, like, I love, like, how we have this, like, back and forth because, like, I really, like, it's, you have to think about it from all aspects and we aren't people that, like, eat up a trend and, like, make it our whole identity. But I just think, like, on other sides of TikTok that, like, we're not on, like, people are going a little crazy. Yeah. Like, a little bit crazy. So now we're going to get into what's dry about these aesthetic trends, even though Fiji and I don't see eye to eye completely. This episode should be like, we disagree. (laughs) Um, But we asked you guys, which of the following is not true about these TikTok aesthetic trends? And... 51% 51% said they are a personality type. 44% said they are a certain lifestyle. 5% said they're about how you look. And 0% said they give a certain vibe. So again, it was what is not true. <laughs> and so it's true that it's not a personality vibe. It does, t- I mean, it's not a personality <laughs> trait. It does kind of give a vibe. But there's no depth. There's no real substance there so just wanted to point that out yeah I think it's definitely not a personality trait I feel like it's not really a certain lifestyle either but I feel like it's even more not a personality trait the vibe yeah. thing be pissing me off though because I swear like because you know I wear the platform boots or like I've had edgier golf styles like I've had like guys say weird things to me like thinking that I'm, like, way more into BDSM and shit like that than I am. And it's, like, is that my fault for wearing too much black and leather or is that their fault for projecting on what they think I am? Like, because, you know, I feel like I could have dominatrix tend Like, I could do that. But, like, that's not, like, just completely me, you know? So, like, the yeah, vibe thing's annoying. Yeah, it's just the look. 
Right. It's the same thing, whereas if someone's dressed like a quote-unquote hoe and you think she's trying to fuck, it's like, why do our outfits, like, say, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, outfits should make a statement and say something about you, but not your whole identity. Like, it's not that deep. Right. You know? It's an outfit at the end of the day. It's self-expression, but it's not, you know, and sometimes it can be, and that's a good thing, but to have people put projections on you because of your aesthetic or your look is a problem. Yeah. Um, and honestly, we got this whole episode idea from Salem Tovar's YouTube video. I love her. Which is called Gen Z. Well, you're, so you disagree with her? I probably because, have watched this before, yeah. But, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So... She said, Gen Z's aesthetic obsession and search for identity is tiring, dot, dot, dot. So basically, I'll just like recap some things that she said. But basically, like a big point of it is like the lifespan of these trends are like so short. Like some are even as short as like two days and it goes super viral. And then another micro aesthetic like will come up. And, like, emphasis on, like, people eat this shit up. Like, they love it. They're glued to their screens. They want to buy the products. And it just kind of, like, overall encompasses this problem of, like, TikTok pressures people to fit into a box and they pressure people to pay for certain products within that box. Like, these aesthetics are a lot about products. Like, if you take it to that level... Like, they have a name, they have a look, they have a vibe, but no personality. Like, the Stanley Cup is like, you know, the Stanley Cup, right? Uh, Yeah. It's like the clean girl. And the same thing with Bloom and, like, all this, like, hashtag mindset. Like, I have my $50 water cup here. Like, it's all just, like, I don't know. It's just, like, it's just kind of a lot. And I do picture, like, blonde girls, like, doing this stuff like that is the image I have in my mind I don't have the like super creative like e-girl in my mind I don't know that's just what stands out to me because I think of like the clean girl TikToks and it's always like a blonde girl like with freckles and she's like sun kissed like every single time yeah and like to hear like it comes from like Latina culture and like looks from the 90s it's just like what else is it's new, like guys? it's like the remember when we were in high school it was like the basic white girl trend kind of thing where it was like the Starbucks yeah. cup and like whatever I feel yes. like clean girl is like basic white girl that like met a Latina friend and liked how she did her hair like it's and like <laughs> elevated herself a little right, bit exactly yeah yeah but I think the the overconsumption thing and the marketing thing is like huge like I yeah. like because I think that's the scary part where it's like like you said like people feel this pressure to like buy these new products to like fit in with the trend and like yeah like we're just constantly being marketed to, marketed to 24 7 and like the trend cycles are so fast so it's like that part yeah. is definitely dry like I get you and the more people that have clean girl products and the more people you see it it's like the more it spreads and like you don't like the Stanley Cup like oh the Stanley Stanley Cup is a thing like there's the that podcast sounds like a cult I don't know if you've listened to them but they did an episode yes yeah they did an episode about the Stanley Cup and it's like crazy like it's like bordering on like collectible culture kind of like when the Starbucks cups were a thing and everyone had their fancy little Starbucks cups but like people literally have like 20 30 50 of these cups and like get like the Taylor Swift ones like immediately sold out like all of that kind of stuff dude like my little sister's 18 that's all the bitch wanted for Christmas that and summer Friday's lip gloss I bought her two of those that's all she wanted I fell victim to the TikTok like she wanted fucking summer Fridays. I was like, okay, bitch, like $30 chapstick. But, like, don't you think it's kind of, like, a young person thing? Like, it's, like, when you're young, you're in school with the same group of people every fucking day. Yeah. And, like, you see them have the cool in things. You want the cool in things. You're figuring out your identity. Like, I think part of it is just, like, kids are, like, growing up online, and we're also watching them grow up online and figuring out their yeah. identities versus us. We're 26, like – are there trends that we're like, oh my God, I need to have that? Do they get us sometimes? Like totally, but like, it's not the same, you know? Exactly. Like the younger generation is what I worry about. Yeah. Is that a Stanley Cup? No. (laughs) Bitch, this is from Ralph's, which is like, like, uh, 
It's the it's the West Coast grocery store. What it like stop and shop like okay. that type of vibe. We have like Publix this was literally Kroger. eight dollars. Okay, yeah, and it's probably essentially the same thing. In the it's the exact same thing. My water is cold as fuck. Right, bitch. it's ice. Right. Yeah. But anyways, so yeah, it's just insane. And this TikToker, um, her at is called the Hood Crochet Princess. Um, and she basically posted a video with like music and words. So I'm just going to read the quote, what she said. And this is about beach girl aesthetic, okay. like beach girl shit. She said, why does no one talk about how toxic the beach girl influencer culture is? The always seemingly happy, perfect relationship at the beach 24 seven, constantly pushing swimsuits and gray bandit clothes on some influencer trip, perfect house aesthetic, perfect life girl. They're actually starting to give me the ick with this content that's supposed to make you feel good, but really is just phenomenal marketing. And honestly, it makes me feel anxious and almost jealous. Half their posts are pushing a product or a sign to do so shit. That's just so unattainable for the average person. And the caption was, if you know, you motherfucking know. So I think this is a part of it that we're going to talk about just a little bit more in a little bit, but it's like, it does cause jealousy, insecurity, yeah. and, like, kind of hate towards other women a little bit. Because even me, like, shitting on the clean girl, like, I'm a white girl too, Autumn. Like, sit the fuck down. Like, why am I, like, shitting on, like, blonde bitches? Like, that's not the point. Like, I don't know. And, yeah, because when I think of the beach girl, I don't know how that aesthetic has manifested today, but I think of Savannah Montano and Alexis yeah, yeah, yeah. Ren, remember, and Jay Alvarez, Jay Alvarez, and then there was another Jay. But, like, whatever. Like, their whole, like, Miami, like, they're on these trips. Like, it was a very aspirational, like, lifestyle when we were in high school and probably, like, early college. But I don't know, because I feel like I fall, I loved Savannah Montana. Like, I was obsessed with her body, because she was, like, thicker in a way. She's not even thick, really. But thicker in a way of, like, that time period where everyone was super skinny like her body was more like mine and like in yeah. an aspirational and an achievable way and like I loved her bikinis and her style but like I don't think I ever was influenced to buy anything it was more yeah. just like oh she's really hot and like cool to look at and that lifestyle looks nice but like yeah. I, I do th I don't know like the hating on people like part of it it might just come from a place of like jealousy where it's like you're like when we're living in Boston and it's cold as fuck and we're sad all the time, like watching a girl that's living her best life in Miami on the beach with her perfect boyfriend, it's like, you know, you hate her because you want to be her in a way too. Yeah. So, it, but it, in, in one sense, that could just be her life. Like, are there a lot of influencers that are like pretending to be happy when they're really not and it's all marketing? But like some of these people like that, they're rich, they're Nepo babies, whatever. They might just be happy and have a perfect fucking life. I don't know. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think like it's like a very like healthy perspective to have to be able to like take these influencers, be like, damn, they have a cool life and like move on. But I think it's, like, people are just, like, so vulnerable to be, like, sucked into it. Yeah. And it's just, like, they're just, like, so jealous and, like, comparing themselves. And that's when we get into, like, all the the sad shit. And yeah. this other woman, Halo Haley, did a YouTube video called TikTok's Obsession with Aesthetics Has Gone Too Far. This was from, like, a couple of months ago. And a big part of it for me was, like, why do trends, like, boot each other out? Because, like I said, like, there is a hierarchy. And, like, when Mob Wife came up, it was technically, like, elevated above Clean Girl. And there was a lot of TikToks of people being like, oh, my God, like, I just bought all this Clean Girl shit. And now you're telling me I need to go get a fur coat. Like, I can't keep up. And that, like, maybe they're kidding. But yeah. it's just like, girl, no one's asking you to keep up. And, like... There's comments like this girl, Jennifer, was like, I'm so clean girl and I don't know how to be anything else. And it's like, that's fine. Yeah. Like no one is telling you that that's not OK. So I just feel like people need to know that, like, it's OK to be a certain way. Like you don't need to, like, adjust all the time, like with all these aesthetics, like it's impossible. So it's like just treat them like the art and fun shit that they are and just move on with your life. Because, like, honestly, when I see... I did see a lot of those TikToks popping up because I ended up in the mob wife, like, algorithm. But, like, I, don't, I feel like, to me, it's just, like, everyone's just, like, 
talking about a trend and kind of just like being self-deprecating and being funny with it. Like, I don't think I've seen enough of stuff like personally, like, and you, I know you like dove way deeper into this for this episode, but yeah. like when I see content like that, I'm kind of just like, oh, they're just like trying to be funny and hop on like a trend that might make them go viral because they're being like, oh, like self-deprecating. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just this bigger conversation and I don't, I don't know, but I'm sure that there are definitely people who like feel bad about it too. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think it also kind of like does kind of fall in like the pick me like train for me is like you're like jumping on this trend. Like maybe they don't even really like it. Like it's just like performative for social right. media too. So she was talking about how it's like reminiscent like sometimes in some people of like high school like type of click things like we're yeah. all clean girls together or whatever. And this other person from TikTok, LJ, she posted a TikTok that said, look, bitch, don't be a pushover. This whole cool girl aesthetic is full of misogyny. It's basically a rebranded pick me. You don't need to wake up at 4 a.m., do six hours in the gym, eat air for breakfast, agree with everything he says, pluck every hair from your body and then make it seem like it was easy. Natural makeup is still makeup. You don't need to follow some new trend to be cool. Just be yourself. The fuck? And I feel like that is, like, kind of what this, like, YouTuber was, like, saying as well. So I just, like, paired those together. But I think it's just, like, people will take it too far sometimes yeah. online. And, like, TikTok is just, like, such a place where, like, people feed off of each other so much. And, like, things just become, like, so, so viral that it's just, like, I don't know, dude. It's just, like... There's so many fucking trends. It's also, like, hard to keep up with all of them. And I think trends come out of, like, opposition to each other. It's, like, people are exhausted. Like, people see clean girl, clean girl, clean girl. They can't do the 5 a.m. wake up routine in the green smoothie. So they're, like, fuck that. Like, I'm going to be, like, a rebel. And I'm, like, the party girl. Like, I've seen that, like, the messy, like, right. party girl aesthetic. Like, whatever. But I think, like, part of it is honestly on each individual to be like, okay, like you can see 10 clean girls on your algorithm and that does not have to affect you. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you can see that. I know. And like, but I think our, our need to take things personally and be like, just because we don't see ourselves in every aesthetic and be like, well, fuck clean girl. I'm a party girl. Yeah. Like, I'm a messy party girl. This is cool now. And then now we're battling clean girls for what fucking reason? Like you, exactly. you have, we don't have complete control over our algorithm, but it's like, you know, your algorithm, yeah. your algorithm is going to feed you what you like spend time on. And if you're getting triggered by like the fact that this girl is living a clean girl lifestyle, then like you that need might to get offline. Yeah. You know, like I right. get when it's like, when it's more things like the trad wives and like soft life and things that are a little bit more about like what it means to be a woman. And like a lot yeah. of these trends to a degree have that. And I think like women, like girls, girls, like we put pressure on e each other to be like, what is the right type of woman or right type of way exactly, to act? Yeah. But like, yeah, like the whole, because to me, this is almost like a little pick me ish too. Like, I don't know. It, yeah. it gets so matrixy. <laughs> like, paradoxical. I know. I think it's like, it could be like almost kind of a reach. And I think the real problem people have, like, is with social media and like yeah. the bad parts that come with it. Like, I think in a perfect world, like, this wouldn't be a problem. But I think like people are so chronically online. They see one video that like really pisses them off yeah. or like triggers them personally. And then they, like, call out the whole thing like yep. this. And, like, I really do get it. Like, I see both sides, and I feel like it's hard. Like, we do have to, like, unlearn misogyny. But sometimes it's, like, misogyny can't always be top of mind. Like, we – because everything is technically, like, fucking misogyny if you really dig deep down. Yeah. So it's, like, we – in order to overcome that, like, we have to be, like, no, like, this is just women expressing themselves. Like, why do we have to, like – reach so far into this yeah and I think it's just all situational like these trends are so viral there's literally like 
9 million people posting. Yeah. So there's a lot of positivity and then there's a lot of hate shit too. And the hate is going to go viral quicker. Like I actually just watched a whole deep dive from D'Angelo. I forget his last name, but he's a really good video essayist. And I watched it about thou who not shall not be named. I'm not going to say the name so that our kid or whatever, but like part of the reason that content went so viral. Thank you. Yeah. Now I know who you're talking about. If y'all don't know, it's like the super misogynistic, one that was arrested that was demonetized on YouTube. You know who the fuck I'm talking about. We're not saying his name because we think it affects our content and Autumn's on my ass about it. But anyway, like that, it's like rage bait. Like in a way it's like speaking yes. to men's insecurities, but it's also like rage bait. And like every time like we see content like that and we interact with, you know, so it's like it, the wholesome shit is probably going to go less viral about these trends as much as the and like, the happy oh, parts that. and the, Yes, and I totally agree. And I think it's, like, hard, too, like, being a content creator and, like, deep diving topics like this and, like, trying to, like, actually think critically when, like, I haven't gone to school in so long. Yes. It is, like, hard. And I do feel like I do have, like, a negative overall view, like, of social media. Like, I do. Like, I think it's ruined our dating lives. Like, I think there's a lot good about it. But ultimately, like, I would be down if there was, like, a different way to, like, have a community for our podcast and like whatever. Well, but I think it's like social me- like I hear like the term media literacy like thrown around like a, a lot now. But like we like this was just put in our hands like we don't know how to navigate it. And I think it's on the individual so much to like curate your own feed in the way that you would curate your own living room, your own environment, your own routine. Like these are, this is content that affects you. And I think like, because we were brought up in this age where it's not something like our parents taught us or we're like thinking of, right. you know, like right. we do have like a responsibility in our own selves to like, I think choose the media that you consume and choose how you interact with it. Like sit with it for a minute, like put your phone down, like don't watch certain things. Like, cause I don't think it's the, I don't think it, Honestly, maybe it's just because I love consuming content and I feel like it's taught me so much like through video essays, like podcasts, more long form type of stuff. And But style too, like Instagram, like I love the models that I follow and the stuff I pick up on. But like, I think that's a beautiful thing. And like being able to be inspired from people who live in Russia or live in fucking Ukraine, the UK, like what, like that is amazing. But like we can't demonize the whole platform as a whole, even though there's a lot wrong with it. I think we need to like look inside ourselves and take responsibility for the way that we're interacting with content sometimes. Cause yeah, it's not going to no, change, you, you know, it's not going to change. And that's why it's like, you have this whole generation of like iPad babies coming up and everyone's scared. They're going to be like doomed and all this shit, but yeah. you're right. It's like, we have this like power this like tool in front of us and it is like on us all to like really just take it with a grain of salt like it's not that fucking serious and like you even like you think you're on TikTok a lot but I swear like those like 18 17 year olds like they're never not on it yeah and I think that is dangerous yeah I really do like I'm straight up like I feel like such a grandma they should but this listener sorry but they should have like no like how we say sex education isn't enough like relationship education like online like media literacy like content social media education like and I feel like us like we don't have kids like people who are listening to us might have kids but like I think that that's something that should be a core part of like kids upbringings like learning how to like interact with content and like manage your emotions around it because you know it should be on the platforms much more but like at the end of the day education around it wouldn't hurt you know and it's everything like how you get a job how you network like it's a fucking skill that we just like it all of a sudden just like happens. So I absolutely agree. I was just going to say this listeners like on sort of the same page. They just said like fuck social media on a whole new <laughs> level of fuck. Just, yeah. Like as a general in in as a whole. And that's what I think like the overall problem is like the negative stuff with social media that we do get because unfortunately it's like people are comparing themselves to these trends and these influencers and it's on them to like step away and just be like that's a different life but they don't have the tools to do that yeah and so people get fucking sad and it's supposed to be a good thing like it's supposed to be empowering like it's that's why it was like everyone's like we connect on this vibe but I do think like I don't know especially like the strawberry like here okay 
the strawberry makeup I don't and understand the tomato that. makeup. I, so this was the thing where it was like, it's like strawberry makeup. It's like pinks and tomato makeup. Same thing. It's like red, pinks, oranges. And there was like a full on debate. Like, what are the differences of the vibes and what girl wears strawberry makeup and what girl wears tomato makeup? And again, like not our side of TikTok, but these videos had so many fucking views. And that's when I'm just like, OK, but like, like, I, like to be devil's advocate. OK, mm hmm. Makeup and makeup artistry is a whole profession. It's a whole art form. It's a whole whatever. For two girls who are makeup artists who care very much about different looks and providing, like, the best services for their customers or, like, whatever, like, that sounds like a serious and important, like, debate to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I right. think... I don't know, like... But I, it's a trend. That's... An, it, that, it wasn't makeup artists, though. But, like... It's just, like, people. yeah. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I'm, like, iffy. Because, like, what's a That's trend fine. and what's, like, what's, like, who makes the trends? Probably makeup artists and styles or or influencers that are using this makeup product that the brand told them is tomato girl makeup and then they're doing this. You know, right. like, a lot of it comes from, like, capitalism. But I think it's also beyond social media literacy. It's also, like marketing literacy and knowing when you're being marketed to which I think I, I feel like I'm hyper aware of because I work in marketing and I'm aware of yeah. like like we literally have a tool for the job I work at that we look at an individual we know what company you look at and every time you visit another yeah. site and every other site like I'm like hyper aware of like the whole marketing path and like all this stuff but I think the average person is like doesn't know about these things or no. even the paid promotion rules or like whatever. So it, it, once you pull back the layers, I feel like it's easier to like not put your whole self into it. Yeah. But, Cause you might yeah. just be coming across like two makeup artists having a debate about something that's in their niche of, you know what I'm saying? Right. And that I totally think that that's totally fine. Like I was, I'm more so like talking about like, People in the comments like that's not strawberry like this is like or that's like being not mean tomato, to each other is. yeah yeah and just kind of like and like it's fine to like have debates but it's just kind of like I don't know I just think it's like a little bit crazy but we are like gonna talk about marketing next and like how these aesthetic trends like are actually like CEO based or SEO yeah because if you type in like coquette on Amazon you don't just get clothes you get accessories you even get furniture you get yeah. all these things so marketing is kind of like loving this shit yeah you know? I'm so happy you guys brains are finally developing and you're waking up to this like aesthetic culture like a year and a half ago when I was like this clean girl thing is the dumbest thing I've ever seen because it's just minimal makeup and you guys like to label things. You know the whole mob wife thing? Shut up. Just shut the hell up. Someone finally inherited their grandmother or great grandmother's fur coat and you think you're mob wife. I'm begging you to find your own sense of style and personality or just delete your TikToks. The rise of aesthetic culture and the demands that it makes of its consumers is definitely a major contributor to overconsumption. It's important to understand and remember that aesthetics, at least in the modern usage of them as a sort of hyper curated vibe, is a very new phenomenon and one that I strongly suspect could not have come to fruition without the internet and the existence of SEO, search engine optimization. Because that's ultimately what an aesthetic is. It's a keyword that describes a certain feeling. If you were to look up, say, cottagecore phone wallpaper, you would expect expect to find some of the same motifs, flowers in fields, picnic baskets, freshly picked fruit, etc. And it's easier when you don't know exactly what you're looking for to look up cottagecore phone background instead of looking up picnic basket phone background and scouring for hours. The problem is that aesthetics have become this thing that everyone is expected to have and they're expected to hyper curate their life to fit an aesthetic. And that's just not realistic. It's not realistic to one day decide that you wanna be coquette and to get a coquette wardrobe and to get a coquette room and to eat and drink coquette things and to always be this one hyper curate curated ideal in your head of what a coquette girl is. Normal people are not like that. They are multifaceted individuals. You do not need to have one aesthetic. You don't even need to have an aesthetic. Okay, here's a good real life example. I dress pretty goth, right? I'm gonna go sit in my office. And this is my rainbow Lisa Frank office because I am a multifaceted individual. And despite the fact that I dress a certain way, my life is not hyper curated to appear that same way. 
And in this office, I have some pretty valuable collectibles. That's because I've been curating this office for five years and I'm still not done. Hence why I only showed a corner of it. But expecting others to fit into one aesthetic or even subconsciously expecting yourself to fit into one aesthetic is harmful because it limits your self-expression. When your self-expression is stifled, you feel unhappy. And what does unhappiness lead to? Cheap hits of dopamine with more overconsumption. And these hyper curated accounts on TikTok where people are showing off their intricately designed coquette bedrooms and their coquette OOTDs and they're like what I wear in a day is where it's just all one singular vibe. It sets a harmful and unrealistic precedent. I wouldn't even call these aesthetic subcultures because they lack depth. Because in five years, I guarantee you a good chunk of these like coquette influencers, and I'm just using coquette as an example, this fits for basically every aesthetic, they're not gonna be coquette anymore. There isn't really politics behind it, it's performance, hence why it's an aesthetic and not a subculture. You don't need to fit into a specific subculture. Most people don't, but you also don't need to hyper curate your life to fit into a subculture. You know what I mean? It's okay to not have everything right now or tomorrow or even in three years. You'll get there and you'll be a lot happier and you'll have saved a lot of money if you do it thoughtfully. Okay, so for that first TikTok, I don't love it. I don't, I just feel like it's like, it's just people want something to be mad about and want to point to other people and be like, oh, you're dumb. Like, it's like people are finding themselves, they're expressing themselves. Like, why does it matter what they call themselves? Let them figure it out. Like, I, like, yeah. I feel like the good thing, I, <laughs> like, I don't know, guys, but I feel like, again, like the good thing about like having access to all this content is that it like, we live in a very creative time. Like, and that is so yeah, cool to me. We do. Where you can express yourself in all these different ways. Does it have a lot to do with capitalism and overconsumption? Like, definitely. But I feel like yeah. anytime someone is playing around, it's it to me that is the same thing as someone being like, Oh, well, you're by today. What are you gonna be pan tomorrow? And then you're straight again. Like, why do you give a fuck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so what? This girl wants to call herself clean girl, like, and that's what she wants to latch on to. She could be a sad girl next week. That doesn't fucking matter. Like, and she it's, probably will. Right. Because she's it's not finding herself. Realistic. Yeah. And I think, like, maybe people have, like, lost that. Like, they've lost, like, the creativity. And I think they are, like, maybe, like, she's viewing it, like, more, like, like the consumerism piece of like all the products and like you have to be perfect to have it. But I get it. It's like, who gives a fuck? And I feel like we all do need to remember that these trends are just for fun. Like it's really not that big of a deal. But I think people online, like, like you said, they want to be mad about everything. And like, just because like I put it in the episode doesn't mean I'm like diehard agreeing. Like yeah. I also just think like, this is trendy, that yeah. it's a problem. So it's but, what like a lot of people are talking about. And it's it's just hard to know. And like I said, I think everything's kind of a problem. Like we are in like a pessimistic era, but I don't think that that is what we should do. I don't think that that's protesting what's actually the problem. Like I think we do need to just like embrace like this is the society we're in. There's TikTok, it'll go viral, there's trends, but, like, it's all with, like, what you take of it. Yeah. And I do think, like, no matter what, it's, like, women do hate on other women, like, all the fucking time. Like, there's never not going to be that. And it's, like, I'll catch myself, too, like, hating on other women. Like, it's a part of, like, misogyny. Yeah. Like, that's what they us. want us to do. They want us to get mad about things and compare no like clean girls better than vanilla girl or whatever yeah. like fucking vanilla girl I'm like I want to be like black rose red girl like not vanilla girl just sounds bad but I'm also just a sexual yeah because you person. think like vanilla sex I'm like they are definitely like kissing when they fuck and it's very slow yeah like, that's I nice I fuck with that but yeah but sometimes. yeah I, I feel like to me it's like we're missing the point and like I like the second TikTok because I think it's closer to on the nose of like what the problem is because it's like for us to get mad at other human beings for identifying as this aesthetic does not make sense to me. The bigger issue is the overconsumption and the capitalism because 
Yes. Again, like coming from a marketing perspective, it's like brands need brand identity and to choose a very yep. specific lane so they can target very specific people to find their products. And like and this is working. And this works. That's why SEO is a thing. Like literally like part of my job is writing like SEO blogs and like Google's changed its algorithm so it's like different now. But like SEO on TikTok is a big thing. It's not just hashtags. It's your captions. It's what words you put on your screen, screen. they're all so that it can categorize it. And the reason for that is so that brands can be like, oh, this girl likes Stanley Cups, Starbucks, and leggings. She would like our brand. They're categorizing you because they have a very solid brand identity. But like we are humans and we're not companies. And so I think it's important to like pay attention to like, the company is always going to have a very specific brand identity to try to find their target audience. But like yeah. you are the consumer. And honestly, like I think we, we get it confused and we think like companies have more power than they do. Like, I they mean, they, they have a lot of buy anything. Right. But like, exactly. And we are not companies. Like we don't need to pick a lane in the same way that a company does. You yeah. Know? And you know what else? Like, I think it's really hard. Like you see, Like, this is the age of influencers. Everyone wants to be an influencer. You work from home. You get free stuff. Like, it sounds great. We all see it. But it's like influencers, as much as we feel like they do nothing, they actually do work. And they actually do need money. Like, they can't give you your favorite video every week if they don't have those brand deals. So I think a lot of people get annoyed, like, oh my God, like it's all so much like clean girl. She's marketing this product, but it's like, that is just her job. It's her job. But the problem is, is that with the rise of influencers and everyone's doing it and all these brands and like companies are doing better, that's what leads to like the overconsumption where it's yeah. like, there's so much more like better marketing with these influencers because people really trust them. And I think people are starting to like, I mean, it depends who it is. Like, you got to put effort into your ads. You can't just be like, hey, what's up? Because I don't think people fall for that as much. But, like, that's the problem. It's not – because I feel like people, they also think of these aesthetics, like, maybe and, like, think of influencers. And I feel like people do have a bad taste of influencer in their mouth. I hear a lot of those people be like, I don't like the word influencer. Like, I'm a content creator. Yeah. Because influencer is, like, a dirty word. And And content creator even too, because I know a lot of people in the art scene that are like, oh, it's not content. Like, stop saying content. That's bad. Like, da-da-da. It's art. Like, whatever. But it's, you know, it's because brands are talking about it in terms of this is content. And, like, it also makes me think of the whole idea of, like, you need to niche down. Like, when you're a content creator, an influencer, like, you need to – like, you're a mommy influencer. You're a whatever. And, like, that always, even for us, has really, like, not appealed to me because, like, even though we're sex relationships identity, like – we smoke cigarettes, we smoke weed, we drink on this podcast. Like we, in some ways we're very party girl, dirty girl, whatever. But like, we also both have like very solid remote schedules. I like, we work out a good amount. Like, you know, we fall into different categories and so does our audience. We read you. Right. We read, like we have these different assets. We could have people listening to us that have kids just because we don't like, you know, but brands want to put you into these boxes because it's better marketing for them. So like, they're always going to create this stuff it's just like I don't know but I also don't think there's anything wrong with an 18 year old girl being like oh I'm clean girl because she doesn't know any better like I think it's just like I don't know it's like such a mess it's so layered and I also like I do see the performative side it's like someone that's like advertising them set advertising themselves as like a coquette girl online Mm -hmm. like there's no way every aspect of her life is actually coquette so it's like And people are mad because it's like, that's not realistic. Like, how can you expect to have everything coquette? But it's like, we know that it's not like that. Like, I'm not sitting here thinking she like, like pees in the morning on a pink toilet. And again, that could be her job. Like that, like she could literally be making her money because she found the niche of coquette and all these brands want to work. It could be her job. So it's like, and that's why it's so weird because our, our lifestyles have become so enmeshed with our jobs, especially as women, like most influence, like I forget the ratio, but it's like more influencers are women. Like we lead yeah. lifestyle type of trend cycle type of things. Yeah. But it's and not, I, yeah. I feel like the only negative thing for me, like it's like I do want to like 
like be on trend like not on trend but like have cute outfits and cute looks and like influencer online like they make it look so good like the coquette thing and like even like other ones like cottage core like other stuff I could be into whatever yeah. fairy girl like honestly I'm down like <laughs> But it's, like, it's more, like, I just, like, it's more just kind of deeper into it. Like, I just want to, like, look good as a woman. Right. Like, I'm insecure about, like, how I look. It's not, like, the specific trend that's, like, hurting me. I think it's just, like, overall, it's, like, there's, you know, but arguably it's good. It's, like, there's so much you can be as a woman. There's not just one way. Right. And you so it's, like, what like- do do we, yeah. I, I was just going to say, use it as a tool, too, because, like, remember I told you, I was like, I think you would look cute in, like, coquette styles or whatever. And like, I was like, okay. Like, I'm- now you can, you know, coquette styles is a thing. I'm going to search that in Amazon, like, whatever. You know, like, use it and as a tool stuff. for you to find, like, your different stuff and don't use it as, like, y- you need to fit in this I, box. Like, my favorite thing about fashion is, like, <clears throat> switching it up and literally going from, like, a different look to something else. And I think that's, everyone's favorite thing about it too and I just think people like you only see one version of someone on social media your timeline is getting slammed with clean girl and people just like get irritated I guess like I don't know I think Gen Z like they've been set up like maybe not the best like they're lonely as fuck they're chronically online but at the end of the day like they are creative, like what you said at the beginning. Like it is all sort of like expression and like it's not their fault. TikTok's a thing. Like, and it's, you know. it's, it's them. It, half of it I think is really exp- expression and then the other half of it is the companies and the brands behind it. Like just because you're on TikTok as a regular human showing your regular life doesn't mean this person com- you're coming across isn't an influencer who's getting paid to post this type of stuff. Nine times out of ten when you see that, that's probably what it is. So like... Yeah, I, I like I think people just need to like recognize recognize when they're being like marketed to more, you know? Right, right, right. Which it's hard. Like not everyone has that lens. But like since we are in the society where like all of the apps like it's we're constantly like you have to kind of like wake up to it. It's your job to like educate yourself a little bit. Yeah. And it's like all over. There's so many like marketing articles out there. Like it's not hard. And I, a lot of people did like that second TikTok we just watched. So I just wanted to read a little bit of the comment section. Someone said, I miss when Tumblr was the place for creating aesthetic pages because it involved a lot of sharing other people's images. Someone said, me who is alternative, but also listens to ancient Rihanna music and my love for nature themes because I'm allowed to be a person with different sides to them. <laughs> Someone said, this video took a large weight off of my shoulders. And someone said, bro, I really needed this. So I think it's like people did, like, maybe they do need this kind of clarification. Like, you guys, we're being slammed with trends. Right. You don't need to commit to one of them. Like, take it or leave it. Because I just think some people, like, I don't know. They just don't think. They don't they think. Just, they only get yeah. what they're, like, being, like, pushed. But, yeah, like, duality yeah. is huge. And that's, like, one of the biggest themes on our podcast. Like, you can be And both. I've been insecure about duality before. Yeah. And we both have. Like, I was, like, I don't really, like, we always say, like, you can smoke cigarettes. You can go to the gym. You can smoke weed. You can do yoga. But, like, to get myself to believe that is hard sometimes. Like, right. I do feel like, honestly, like, it's funny you brought up the smoking thing. Because, like. Not like smoking girls and aesthetic, but I do <laughs> feel is, like it yeah. is kind of like a vibe. Like yeah. you either smoke or you don't type shit. Yeah. And like I honestly, I feel like if you do smoke like weed or cigarettes, like I feel like you've like maybe been through shit. Like you, yeah. like I like I feel like people that don't like are clean girl. Like yeah. definitely. Yeah. Because we put but people it's in like, boxes all the time. Like I think it's right. a natural human tendency. I mean like. I find that too because it's like I separate my life very distinctly. So do you, you know, like in terms of like our corporate identities versus our regular because what we think is going to be like perceived it's hard okay. Sometimes I'm like, oh, right. But like when I'm out in like East Atlanta at a bar dressed in a mini skirt or whatever, like that's you're not going to think that I wake up at 8 a.m. every day and I have a workout routine and I like do this. You see me smoking cigarettes and drinking. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we want to like put people into boxes. Like, so I don't know. It just gets so. But it's like, why do we, it's like, and sometimes like putting things in boxes, it's not like the worst thing in the world, but it's like, why do we really do that as humans? Because we really do. Like, I feel like maybe it makes us like feel more confident about things, like makes us feel like we know things like, oh, like 
that says this about this person. But it's like, yeah, like we need to just like all be just more. Like, oh, well, I remember listening to yeah. a podcast like way long ago that was like talking about be- behavioral science and like how humans were socialized. And it talked about like that's literally like similar to like anxiety and stress and like how like your body perceives this as a threat. Like humans literally like did that put people into boxes as like a community like threat type of thing. Like when there were like other villages or whatever, like going to war, like back then, like you're like, oh, this person's different than us. Therefore we need to protect ourselves and be scared. Like they, we don't Not identify the with them. But yeah, like I, it was like a podcast like a while back, but like I, I found that really interesting because it's like, I think we got to think about how our brains and how like, we're based off what companies tell us in society we want to put people in boxes but like second guess that thought before you just are like oh this means their whole life is this oh this means whatever just like you know take it at face value and and leave it yeah Um, and I think when people are so like online and like maybe not going outside like it's easy to get lost in the matrix but like it's possible to like take it for what it is and leave it yeah um But as we mentioned before, like, not only are these, like, trends going viral on TikTok, but they're viral, like, they're on the news, like, celebrities are doing them and stuff. Like, you know, main publisher, like, article, like, hi, people, I don't know the words, but it's gone mainstream. And so we asked you guys, like, why do you think these trends, like, do go so viral? Like, why do people really eat it the fuck up? And 21% said capitalism. 21% said people are feeling lost in their identity. 46% said people are chronically online and 12% said it's just fun. IDK. (laughs) IDK. (laughs) That was disgusting the way I just said that. Um, But I think they go so viral. Blank statement because they like the most obvious reason is because people are online. Like that's why things go viral because people are there waiting for the next trend. Like they're hungry for it. Um, But I don't know. Like, I also think, like, maybe, like, if I had, like, or if we had, like, thought about the episode, like, more, like, another option could be, like, not are they feeling lost in their identity, but they're just, like, genuinely, like, excited to, like, participate in something like that. Because, like you said, like, the artsier side of it, like, people love to, like, have a different look and, like, have a look to curate. Like, people that, like, they literally, like, plan their outfit off of, like, mood boards. Like, that's how some people, like, really do. So I feel like that's another reason why they go viral. It's just, like, people love, like, fashion and stuff. Yeah, because I feel like the good side of it is that, is the humans being humans, being creative, being attracted to new things, and wanting to explore their identity. I think the bad part of things and why, like, the, the other side of it that I'm on in this episode is, like, we need to not get mad at other people. We need to get mad at the system that's manipulating us, which is the algorithms yeah. and the capitalism. Like what's putting right. you into boxes is capitalism and marketing campaigns and the algorithm because it needs to organize things in some way. So it's like humans are going to be humans. Like we're going to meet a new person and be inspired by their style. We're going to watch a show and want to make a new fucking pasta dish. Like that's just like human shit. But, like, yeah. the boxing of things and, like, all of that, like, it's marketing campaigns and it's ways businesses are trying to make more money. And that's who you need to be, like, mad about more for these labels, I think. If anyone. And yeah. how they influence people versus just, like, people trying on different hats, you know, so to say. Right. Yeah. And it does, like, I get how, like, especially if you're younger, like, it's vulnerable to feel, like, you know, seeing all these influencers in this new, like, sort of day and age. But it's, like, it's, that's just, like, what it is. And that's why I think what you said at the beginning, it's, like, being educated on this shit is, like, important. Because it can lead to, like, extreme depression and, like, not feeling like you're enough and comparing yourself to all these different rich girls online. Like, it's, it's hard. And it's not, like, easy to navigate that. Um But at the same time, you just have to remember, like, you have no idea. Like, maybe she is rich, but maybe she wasn't before. Like, you know, it's like everyone has their own sort of story. And I think it's just so hard to humanize people that are online because it's not real. And it's just so easy to, like, cast judgment. And I think it's, like, something, like, we just have to be more empathetic. And like you said, like, be mad at the systems in place. Just, like... You can't be mad at, like, Robert you went on a date with on Tuesday because he did something fucked up. It's, like, you can be, but it's, like, patriarchy's the bigger issue. Yeah. Like, he, you know, so like, it's, like, Like, yeah, you can that. still be mad at him. Like, that's, like, yeah. But, like. Depending on what he did. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, yeah, and also, like, guys, like, 
I, it's hard to maintain a consistent schedule of like posting and creating content. So like most of the people that are doing that are people that are getting paid for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like just thinking about that, like we all post for different reasons. And like a lot of people like that are more influenced, just think of the mindset of, oh, I'm just posting because it's fun. Like, but the, the people that are posting consistently and pushing this stuff are literally getting paid or their whole companies with marketing budgets. Like, yeah, it's a whole different type of like content. But in the person where sorry, and no. it, when it went from clean girl to mob wife. That person that made that TikTok about clean girls in, mob wife is, or clean girls out, mob wife is in. Yeah. Like, I don't know if they knew how viral that was going to go or how literally people were going to take that. Yeah. But like that, I can't even stress enough. Like that video was like the video. Yeah. Because there's so many people using that sound and like getting a mob wife haircut. Like type yeah. shit. Which again, like, it's like, is it really that bad? Like, it's fun to get a new haircut, you know? Yeah. I need a new haircut, bitch. Yeah. I mean, people always want a hot take. But one other aspect I do kind of want to bring up on, like, the, like, bad-ish side of things. Like, I came across this tweet today. So, Pop Crave posted, Katy Perry looks incredible in these new photos. And it's her, like, kind of against this white wall in this, like, club-esque attire. And this girl posted, the club kids in real life are getting sober and the ultra-rich millennials are turning into Bushwickified XCX clones. Suddenly, Katy has been drinking Molly water the whole time. And I just thought this was so funny because it's, like, this weird time because of social media in a way, social media and regular people do drive trends as much as the companies mm-hmm. do. Like, it's it's kind of, like, balancing out. I know. And, like, we beca- have so much power. We have so, we have more power than we think, especially with TikTok when who knows how the algorithm has changed. I think it definitely has since there's more people on it. But, like, the beautiful thing, too, it's, like, a plus and a minus, right? Because it's, like, a small creator could have this aesthetic or this style or this clothing piece that they made or this subculture in Bushwick of like partying and like whatever, like could go viral. And then all of a sudden someone like Katy Perry or like Rihanna or Beyonce is like wearing it because that's what's trendy. And I feel like it is weird because it's like, you know, it's funny to think about, like, I think there's like a very clear scene in Atlanta that was like at Reverie that turned to cry baby and like you know the shows and like eav like there's like a common thread through the style like it's not like completely cohesive but like there's definitely like a subculture there and it's funny to think about like it's kind of cool to think that like oh that's gonna become like mainstream but it's also fucked in a way that it's taking like young creative people who are like thrifting or doing what they can with the outfits in their closet and being creative and then all of a sudden someone with a lot of money is like taking that style and like making it big and then like monetizing it and making money off of it which we see all the time with companies like Sheen literally taking like small designers clothes and stuff so like that's the part that's like pretty dry for me because like there's a lot of appropriation, not just with, like, you know, these small party cultures, but also, like, black culture, like, Latina culture, like, stuff like that, where it becomes, like, we're not giving credit to the people who, like, invented this style completely because yeah. it's it's gone so far. And, like... It goes so far. Yeah. yeah. And it, 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 the Molly Water thing was, like, hilarious to me because it made me think of, like, the style. We, I feel like our style when we were at Emma emerson was like very unique like emerson style was kind of like a thing like us partying it and was. stripping like we had like a distinct different type of style that i don't think would fit in a niche but like back then i was drinking hella molly water like it would be trippy to see one of your favorite stars all of a sudden wearing an outfit that you had just like created in your room because you needed something to wear on a friday when you're broke as fuck like that's kind of right. weird And part of it's like, wow, like, I feel like it's like, I can't believe it really like got to that level. But also it's like, yeah, it goes so far and people don't think to know where things came from because they don't really care. Not everyone, but like, I think that's like a big problem too. Would you like, I feel like, like with Kourtney Kardashian, like, did she kind of take on like mob wife or she just always kind of like was? It not really mob wife. Like she took on like the like, what is it? Like gothic Catholic style, which oh, I really yes. like too, because like I came from like Catholic school and like. With like the crosses and the black and the silver. Exactly. Yeah. Like I think it's almost like a little old Lana Del Rey-ish like Tumblr-esque vi- or American Horror Story. Like that's kind of what I think about too, because like the nuns and stuff. Yeah. 
But yeah, like, no, she hasn't always been like that. Maybe, um, what's her, Travis Barker was more like a little bit goth, whatever. Yeah, low-key, she probably got it from him, not like fucking TikTok. But you never know. Like, yeah. And I feel like even celebrities to that level, like, they, the fact that they know about these TikTok trends and it's like a thing, it's just like, it's so crazy the power that honestly, like, these like micro aesthetic and like micro influencers like have because yeah at the end of the day like the trends would still be trends but the influencers are kind of the ones that like make the trends go round like those are the videos that are getting viral like they have like the products gifted they didn't have to buy them like and it's very easy for content creators with so many aesthetics and niches to like kind of like find a lane Um, but it's also like, I know what you said. It's like, you do, they, they tell you to find a lane. They're like, you should fit into one box as a content creator because like, it'll help you drive the algorithm. We'll know exactly what you're doing. But then in turn, people like take that and they're like, oh my God, like they're just one perfect way, one perfect life. But it's, it really is like about the marketing. And I know I kind of went off track, but yeah. I just had a realization. Yeah, because, you know, there's also people, like, a lot of these, like, top stylist, designers, whatever, li- literally go to places where there's, like, Bushwick, East Atlanta yeah. Village, like, whatever, and w- look at what young kids are wearing and what they're doing. And, like, that's, like, the sa- – and always when it's small designers that don't get credit for, like, the trends that they created and then all of a sudden they go viral. Like, that shit does kind of make me sad. It makes me think of, like, the I just watched the Charlie D'Amelio fucking deep dive. But, like, remember she was doing dances that, like, a, a young black creator had created. And then she ended up, like, giving her credit and she was like, oh, this is where it comes from. And it's like, I want to give benefit of the doubt because we don't always know. Like, sometimes it's like this – niche aesthetic could come from like fucking Dublin, Ireland in this niche party scene. And you have no idea because you came across it based off of this got company. Lost in translation. Yeah. But like, I, I, there's like a lot of good YouTube ch- channels that do like deep dives into like where aesthetics came from and where they developed and like who to give credit to and all of that. So like, if you're someone who cares about like style or really identifies with Coquette, I think you should at least honor like where that comes from, which I think is, like, tied to, like, ballerina culture or, like, whatever. Like, it, you don't have to be a ballerina to do ballerina style, but at least, like, if it's something you're really passionate about representing, like, maybe look at the roots of where it comes from. I don't know. Yeah. So, lastly, we're just going to talk a little bit about the environmental impact on all of this. Like, we do care about the environment. Like, I specifically do. Like, honestly, like, I could do a lot better, like, especially Same. when it comes to, like, smoking when you're outside like that's where I like you know what I mean but I do think it's important to talk about this when we've mentioned like overconsumption like 89 times so like just some like quick stats and I did read this article that was um uh from Loyola Mount University it was like uh students talking about like aesthetic and all these trends or whatever So the article said, one issue with micro trends is that they lead to overconsumption that in turn create massive amounts of landfill waste and other pollutants. Once people are done with the trend and on to the next, they often throw it away or donate it, which may also lead to landfill. LMU junior Quinlan Braun has noticed that TikTok trends come and go rapidly. Every month there's just new clothes coming in that people think are cool and so they're making more and more different styles and stuff and I feel like it's going to waste. And so basically like, you know, to make clothes and like products or whatever, it's like polyester, nylon, acrylic and like that takes 100 years to kind of like biodegrade and like go Mm. away. So it's like a lot and basically like 35% of all of those microplastics um, they are in the ocean and it comes from like textiles like polyester, which is clothes. And overall, I just thought this was insane. But the fashion industry is it's like one of the second largest consumer industry of water specifically, requiring about 700 gallons to produce one cotton shirt and 200 gallons of water to 2, produce 000. a pair of jeans. 2,000. 2,000. 2,000 gallons of water. To produce a pair of jeans. So it's like, like I said, like this, it's not a problem that influencers have jobs. They're making money. Like the brands are paying them to market these products. But like at the end of the day, like people look up to these influencers and they will buy the products. Like it has a lot of hold. And like, I do think even online, like 
those TikTok videos about like they show their makeup drawers and it's literally like these bitches have oh, like makeup. 500 lipsticks and they're never going to use all yeah. of this. So this is like an overall problem, not even necessarily related to like the aesthetic trends, but it's just like important to like note like that is definitely like a really bad piece. Yeah, this. like this is definitely like a big danger of it. And I feel like that's like so much more the case for thrifting. And like when you really think about it, probably m maybe not like clean girl, but like mob wife and like dark academia and all of those like have roots in thrift stores. I feel like because it's yes. like the things that are being resold in thrift stores from our parents generation, from other people, like whatever, like that's what people are picking up. So it's like, if you have the opportunity to buy a fur coat that's mob wife esque from a thrift store, which is probably more authentic versus like from jaded and London. And more the vibe anyway. Yeah, like, exactly. Then do that. And like, I, like, I really feel like thrifting, like, I know it's hard because, like, thrifting prices have gone up such, like, quite a bit, especially in cities. And, and you stuff have like to that. really get in there. You have to like, get in really there. You really gotta, gotta check. Look. Like, Goodwill is not as good as it used to be. Like, all that stuff. But, yeah, that is crazy. It, it really is sad, like, how much. And th these clothes, too. Like, I remember watching some video. It's, like, these clothes that are mass produced like this, they don't last. So it's like you could have this cute skirt, like it's it gonna fall apart in the laundry, like the it's stitching's not great, like the stretch. It'll be good for one night. Right. And I do feel like within our culture, it's very like you don't post in an outfit twice. Like that's just not a thing. And like even with the podcast, it took me a minute to be like, okay, Autumn, like we can rewear. You, we've done like sixty episodes at this yeah. point. Like I don't have sixty different yeah, shirts that I, I want to wear. Do. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, know, I'm running so out. Many. I'm running out. But, but like, you are a big thrifter, and you've always been like that. Like, you ball the fuck out. I, yeah. I've also always had good luck, and I remember being in college, like, so jealous of you. I'm like, how the fuck Well, I think it's this? also just, like, I feel like you got to, like, there's a couple pieces in my closet. Like, one, if I like something, like, thrifting, and it's maybe not on style, but I just like it, I might get it and save it for later because... I have certain pieces in my closet that I used to wear all the time in college that were thrifted. Do I think that they're like stylish in a way now? No, but the trend cycles are so fast that in next year, it could come back be. up again. And at least I know this piece was made in like the 80s or the 90s. Like I'm going to hang on to it. Those like better quality clothes, you know? Yeah. So I feel like it's like when you're thrifting, like trust your gut. Don't just look for things that are like super trendy right now. Like look for things that fit you well or that you find cool because that is eventually gonna, like, it will be. Yeah. Like I have jackets that I still, I've been wearing since freshman year of college and I find different ways to style them, but it's such a good piece that it's like, I'm going to keep wearing it, you know? Yeah. So. yeah. And clothes are hard and it's always like people take it so personally. Cause at the end of the day, it's like, clothes has to do with like your body and like how you look in certain clothes and maybe that's why people get so fucking heated too yeah. because it's just like it's so I don't know it's just like people they don't see themselves in the type of people that are it yeah, representing that's big. and they get you know and it's upset and that is upsetting you know but it's just like that it does have to do a lot with that and again like my problem lies more within like I feel insecure like I want to look good not necessarily like want to be on trend yeah but I do feel like I need to have a fucking dope like 10 out of 10 outfit if I leave the house yeah like, I do feel that pressure but I don't feel like conform to be in a specific style like, yeah I really don't and I know you don't either and most people we hang out with also don't but there are people that do online which is sad and I just want to tell them that like they don't need to do yeah. that and like it's gonna be okay like I, it's all good I actually saw this quote I think it was on TikTok it was like or maybe it was Twitter it was some like older woman that was in fashion for a while and she said that the best outfits like the like style happens when you look at your closet and you have no idea what to wear and I feel like that's so true like even last night when I was like going out I'm like I have no clue what to wear like I'm just gonna play around with I changed like a couple times but it's like you know like when you're just trying to be creative with the pieces you already have in your closet that's the times when you're being the most creative and you're gonna go out and you have something that's so different from everybody else but it's still cool. and you know what's so crazy bitch is like <laughs> honest to god like I was so like willing to do that when I was younger like yeah. in middle school and like 
I I honestly like did get made fun of for it. Like I would like pair things together that like maybe it didn't look great, but like I genuinely thought yeah. it looked good. And then I feel like I hit like eighth grade and it was like, I'm conforming. Yes. I'm going to buy Uggs and a North Face. Yes. Like, but North there was Face a moment in there, like early middle school where I used to always wear like two braids like right here, like down my face and like a headband. And like everyone would tell me like I looked so weird and like, glitter eyeliner yeah. everyone would be like why are you wearing that like I had that when I was growing up and like I really wish that I like held on to it yeah because I feel like that's why when I got to Emerson I was like I don't know my style because I was in this town for so long where everyone wore the exact same thing like yeah I didn't even know if I liked it or not and so now it's like to think about like we didn't have TikTok aesthetic trends in high school like what what we said so yeah, it's, and yeah. I think that's an important important thing to stress, too, because, like, I think we're both privileged in the way that, like, we were able to go to college in a different city and reinvent ourselves and then move again and, like, be able to re- – I think when you move and you join, like, a new community, it's easier to reinvent yourself than if you're, like, in your hometown your whole life and people have known you as this for so long to suddenly, like, switch into this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's totally. easier to Totally, like, around. you have to go. Yeah. Like, but if you don't have the – privilege to go like that's hard yeah you know yeah, yeah. but I, I'm all yeah. here for like when we were little and we would like dress up and like put on a play for your parents at a fucking family gathering we need to Dude, get back to like, that like honestly and that's why it's like this all kind of stemmed from like nostalgia shit and yeah. that's what we're all like really yearning and like latching on to and I'm like, is it because we didn't have social media back then? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, well, let's wrap up the episode, guys, talking about what we're wet, dry, and still maybe a little confused about the topic. I'm definitely wet. Like, we didn't talk about this, but, like, Aaliyah core. Oh, like, I was going to mention her at some point. Like, yes. I I just, like, love her so much. And, like, also, like, she was on Drew Afualo's show. Like, you know, big. Like, I love She's that. She's from Atlanta. Like, she used to work at a restaurant right down the street from me. Yeah. I know, dude. And, like, just, like, she is just. And, like, talk about, like, creativity and artistry. Right yes. the fuck there, bitch. Yes. Like, she is just, like, so, like, intentional. And, like, all of her looks are, like. Like, I don't know how she does it, yeah. honestly. Like, how does she make that whole thing look so good, you know? Yeah. And I think a lot of it just has to do with, like, her just, like, being a light also. Like, she's just hot. But I think it's just, like, she's I don't know. And it really started shit. Yeah. Like, people ate it the fuck up. And, like, that's, like, an example of, like, someone literally, like, coming up because of this, like, fashion creativity. Mm-hmm. And, like, that is, like, definitely the wet parts about all of this but anyways yeah love her longtime fan um yeah I mean I'm definitely wet that like we have exposure to like different ways to look and like the creativity of it all and just like that people are able to kind of like relate to one another and like the empowering aspects of it I guess yeah yeah same like I I feel like when I think about us versus like my parents generation and it's like they still live in a small town grew up like right down the street from their fucking parents like you know like I think about the privilege that we have to play around with our style and to try out different things and be exposed to so many like different types of media and like things to learn about it so like I think that's really cool like I really do think we're living in a very like creative age like partly because of the pandemic we spent so much time alone we have all these platforms to be inspired by like that is all just very cool to me I'd rather have even though it's like you know science math was pushed so much when we were younger like I feel like today like the arts are pushed more like and that's cool um Yeah, I'm I'm what about like some of the different aspects of like different styles and like being able to like pull different things from different stuff and also like I like to go down the rabbit holes of like where it came from and watch all those video essays so like that part's wet. I don't know. Like I I'm what about the like art of it, art of style and the art of like also being a young kid and being able to like grow up and try on different stuff to figure out your own identity like I think that's all like human and fucking normal and it needs to be like more accepted yeah and I'm definitely just dry about like all the hate discourse like we do see on TikTok and like how like social media tends to like take a good thing that's supposed to be like empowering and just like make it into something bad 
and like the overconsumption, like the environmental stuff, like that's all super dry. But I also think like, like we don't have that much control over like what's going on in terms of like the brands and like all of this being thrown at us. So it's like we just really have to like just like ha- like educate ourselves like on this stuff and just like realize that like we and then like boxing yourself into an identity like I'm definitely dry that people feel like they need to do that in order to like fit in or like be on trend like that's not what like the art of fashion is supposed to be like and I do think some people take these trends to an extreme and like try to like advertise like a certain lifestyle that's not healthy like the waking yeah. up super early like always working out drinking green or the juice. trending like, it's not body realistic types, like please the girl bossing right yeah. the legging leggings like there's a lot but it's like I'm also dry about like maybe it's like people do reach and it's hard to like know like when it's like like it's like valid or not like there's just like everyone has opinions and it's great that we like have a platform that we can all speak them but it's just like confusing and yeah. like I don't know. It's just like you got to like talk to your people in real life about these things because if you go down these like online like rabbit holes like it can really just like change your perspective or like perception on things too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely also dry about like the hate and the like annoyance and the like rage bait like type of content about this stuff because I think like there is a common enemy but we're not choosing the right one. Like we're getting mad at like individual people versus like the bigger issue is, like, the algorithms or the social media apps or the, like, consumer, like, the brands or whatever. And, like, we have to remember, like, you know, the 24-year-old girl that's posting this stuff is probably just trying to make money and not work a nine-to-five and, like, that that type of stuff. Like, it's... And, like, um, that's great. Yeah, like, we're literally her as well in a way, you know? But I'm, I'm dry also about our inability to see duality in things, and I think it's because of that, like, the algorithm culture that we live in and the, like, consumerist culture that we live in and I am dry for the people that like take this on like it's it's weird because I feel like throughout this episode like it's been hard for me to develop empathy or like put myself in the shoes of those people because I feel like I'm so far out of it so like I don't want to like discount that 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 is like a real experience for people to feel the pressure to like take on this whole style or identity or buy all this new stuff um but at the it's same time, we're in this weird bubble where other people do it too. Like, yeah, and they're growing so, up. And I think that's also part of it is like, I'm dry that we can't also see that like, this is the first time people are like growing up on social media. So I think we need to give ever. a little bit more grace. Like when it's a millennial that's posting, why the fuck are, is everyone clean girl? And you're talking about 17 year olds. All right. Like. You know what I'm saying? Like, you were the same way at that age. You just didn't have TikTok, and it was, like, bear paw boots, and it was Starbucks. Like, it was just different at that time, so let's develop a little bit more empathy for what it's like to grow up online. But I definitely want to be, like, empathetic towards those people and, like, that that is a really real experience because growing up in this time, like, can be very confusing, and you have all of these influences as a young person that can be overwhelming and make you feel like you need to conform. And, like... Personally, like, I didn't grow up at the time of TikTok. Like, there was Tumblr and stuff, so I can't relate as much. But at the same time, like, I don't know. I feel like it's on us as, like, older Gen Z, like, millennials, like, people who will have kids, like, whatever, to, like, push media literacy and push, like, duality like we do in this podcast and push that, like, that is okay without hating on other people, you know, and looking at the system and the algorithms as the bigger problem. So, like, I I, want to, like, I don't feel like I was, like, not empathetic enough towards people that are struggling with that in this episode so I want to make sure I acknowledge that but at the same time like I don't know like I want to push to be different than that like we don't need to like look at everything as such so boxy yeah I do think it's all about perspective though so I don't think it's like I don't think you should feel bad about that and I didn't feel like you weren't having empathy for those people I think it's just like like we are lucky to be people that like are we're proud of ourselves like we are confident and no matter what and it didn't it took us a long time to get there but I do think exactly what you're saying it's like the kids growing up online this is all they've ever known this is the marketing that they know like they don't 
they didn't have TV ads and cable. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, but this do you is think their... they, but because that's their normal, do you think they look at it? Like, I feel like it's almost harmful for us as like older Gen Z and millennials to be like, this is bad sometimes. Yeah. You know, when it's just their process of growing up is a little different than ours because of like, right. you know, like them exploring their like identity and trying on different things, I don't yeah. think is bad, you know? Yeah, and I think like we don't know what it's like to be in their shoes. Yeah. Like, we don't know what that's like. So I don't think, yeah, I think like people are hard on Gen Z and like it's like you guys like don't have identity. Like I get how that can come across as kind of just like, well, no, they do. They just like have like a huge platform with like a million fucking people on it that all have different personalities. Like that's just what happens. And like, I don't know. I don't think it, maybe it is as bad as like I thought like at the beginning of the episode. But I do think it's just like really hard to like just like not see the big picture. And I think it's it's emphasis like this is what I'm confused about. It's like the misogyny piece. Yeah. It's, like we always like we're like, OK, like women can be whoever they want. Like we shouldn't put them in boxes. They can do this and that. And then you have all these trends that are like clear cut boxes, like clean girl, this, that, the other thing. And like, while me and you were like, oh, we can be this one, one the next day. Like, I don't know if everyone else feels like that. So like, is, is that like, we're just putting another like thing on women. But then it's also like, if you look, it's like, well, no, like, it's just a fashion choice. Like everyone likes different things. Like, it's as a woman, it's empowering to like be the sad girl for a day and like whatever. Yeah. So that's where I get confused because I get the people that say it's misogynistic. It's like putting it in a box and like maybe people aren't outwardly like I'm a clean girl, like I'm better than you. But it's like I'm a clean girl. I have this, that and the other thing like Malibu Beach House, like I go on runs at 6 a.m. Like but it's like that's just her life. Like, you know, that's why it's yeah. confusing. It's yeah. confusing. Yeah, yeah, because it's all so curated. And I think yes. that's the hard thing because it's like, even if, like, I know with the trad wife stuff and some of them, it's like, is this content satire or is it real? Like, sometimes, like, it's the so line, hard, it's yeah. so hard to tell because, like, <laughs> and part of me is like, it's so cool that we're able to be so creative and someone could be completely, have a complete satire in their life as a trad wife. But, like, it's right. also dangerous because people could be consuming that content thinking it's real. So, like, yeah, like, the line of, like, you know, and I think it's also because of, like, the capitalism and stuff that we can't show, right. like, the full duality of everything and, like, talk That's about it and accept problem. it. Yeah, but it, it is super confusing because it's, like, where is the space for that in these algorithms that are so, like, defined by keywords and consumer culture that wants to put us in brand groups so like that yeah that's very yeah like you know too. that tiktok that's like monday tuesday yeah. wednesday like it would be good if you had like monday it's like sad girl tuesday yes. you're yes. wednesday you're fucking cottage core like that would be that's more inspiring to me because but it's like some people want to live a simple life they want to yes. literally just have like neutral clothes and like yeah. that's it and they feel happy and I feel like as someone that would not feel happy doing that maybe that's why I'm so like well I don't want to be that one trend like whatever and I'm like well we can be all of them yeah but we also should acknowledge that some people some do people like do to want just that. do the same shit every single day and, like, that, and that's yeah. fine yeah because like I remember when I went to school with like uniforms like Catholic school they were like oh it's like it causes less stress and it makes everyone more comfortable because you don't have to think about it and you pick out the same thing Every oh day. Oh, my God, I know. You know. That would have been honestly so nice. Like, yeah, but I hated it because I wanted to express myself because that's what I grew up with. But, like, even, like, they talk about, what is it? Like, some of these tech billionaires, they wear the same type of outfits every day because it's less decision, so it's easier for them to pick that. Like, you know, some people do just like that same one aesthetic, like, whatever, and then, like, duality doesn't play a role. Fine. And that's okay. Like, I think we just need to, like... Stop judging people. I don't know. Just, like, let people be and, like, like you said, like, find the real enemy, which is capitalism. Like, why is it, why are most people poor in this country? Like, that's the problem. Yeah, like, you know? the poor fucking environment over here. Like, yeah. <laughs> right, because at the end of the day, it's, like, 
people do move on from these trends and like never wear shit again and like get rid of it and like it's a part of life but yeah one last other thing that I'm confused about I think is like giving credit to where trends come from and like I said it's so iffy because this could start with this small creator and this small community and then it's like taken a hold of by this big brand and like same with TikTok dances same with like foods like everything like that like it's become such a fusion like such a melting pot or whatever they say we're just humans yeah like like we're a global society like I think like the best practice is like if you are like if you find out you've been doing something and someone's like oh this is where it comes from like give credit where it's due but like that whole idea of like giving credit and like the way things have morphed is so confusing to me because when is it appropriation when is it not like we've we've gone too far I feel like almost where it's really hard to differentiate so that is still really fucking confusing for me yeah and I feel like almost to be like a successful influencer like you do have to like work like you have to like research stuff like you have yes that is like a big part of it like you do kind of have that duty in like a sense yeah that like um So, yeah, it's tough. It really is. But that about does it for this episode, guys. So we hope you liked it. Let us know what you thought. You can always DM us on Instagram or leave a comment below on YouTube. But wherever you're watching, please just take a second to follow and subscribe. Join our community of Confused Pussies. We would love to have you. Um, Make sure you follow us on Instagram. We are at So Wet So Dry at everything. Um, and yeah. Yes. And if you guys want to financially support this podcast, we have listener support through Spotify. Even if you're listening on another platform, it's at the bottom of the description for every single episode. It's 99 cents, $4.99 or $9.99 a month. It would mean so much to us as small creators. We really appreciate it. Also, if you could rate us five stars on Apple Music or on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening, it really helps. And we love you so much. We will catch you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Now, I can tell you how I started, but a lot of people come to it differently. How I started was that somebody suggested it as a joke many, many years ago. And it was because of how assertive I was in my communication style, not because of anything sexual. And (laughs) even though I was quite directive, but everything was very vanilla. And I kept that at the back of my mind. And when I was very frustrated in my corporate career, I looked it up and I found a place that was looking for trainees. And I called them up, joined them, and started pretty much the next week. I managed to shadow a lot of the other mistresses that were working there who were kind enough to let me in. And the headmistress, headmistress Amanda, also set up some... Uh, workshops for us on rope and you know little tricks but a lot of the things that I learned was definitely from observation and from listening to what other people had to say so I would say that if you don't have access to a facility that is looking for people to train for looking for new people and they don't have a system that supports onboarding people there's a lot of uh, classes that are available. There are lots of communities of people who are available and who are, who have reputations. You want to be careful about who you approach and be wary about whether you can trust their information. Take time, look for reputations and understand what it is that maybe you're looking for and how you can find that in people who are more aligned with you. So even now, I still look for styles of rope or styles of play. And if they're offering classes, or I gravitate towards them. If they aren't, sometimes I'll ask them whether I can compensate them for their time to answer questions, to run a little workshop for me. And this has been very useful in developing my practice as well. But if you're starting from really the ground, ground up, and you want to understand how to be more dominant or even just assertive in your life.